Rory, nothing is worse than not being able to perform when it's time to. Mm. Whether you're busy, you got a lot of stress in your life going on. Luckily, hymns get you in the game. True, but thank God Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis and their generics for up to 95% cheaper. Start your free online visit today at Hims.com slash Rory Mall. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash Rory Mall for your personalized ED treatment options. Hims.com slash Rory Mall. And we are back, top of the week. Who's excited? October is flying by. I cannot believe we're already halfway through this month. My favorite month, might I add. Your fall, baby? Well, no, I was born in May, but I, October tends to have the, my favorite weather. You look like you took your first steps in fall, though. Uh, May, May, June. No, you were walking by then. I mean, I, I appreciate the confidence. Six months in? No, he was You don't walk by then? Amara was like nine or ten months. She was early. Oh. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I appreciate that, yeah. but no, I was probably still crawling, but like through the leaves, because I love the fall. Yeah, foliage. It's, it's actually, we've actually gotten some good weather, I feel like, in October. Yeah, it's been nice out. I can't complain about the weather. It's sunny, but you know, a little breezy. Oh, that was so insensitive. That was so local. Was it? There's been awful weather for the past. I know, like. Five weeks. A third of this country's <laughs> underwater right now. Oh We're my like, God, oh, I'm man. such a selfish fuck. It's sweater weather up here, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've had my my pumpkin spice yeah, latte. It's cute outside. <laughs> Taking flicks. Um, how was your weekend? It was good. It was cool. Quiet, calm. Mm-hmm. I was in uh, family mode. Had everyone in my house. Did painted pumpkins. Um, you know, oh, that's nice. What you paint? Her her face. Amara completely missed the pumpkin. Oh, thank God you were talking about Amara. Oh. Okay. Oh where is your God. mind going? I said it was a family weekend where we were painting Oh, you pumpkins. went there? You're nasty. Ew. Stop listening to that Glorilla album. You just said nothing. We didn't really do nothing. Like, I just paint. And you was like, what did we paint? You said her face. You never I mentioned Amara. I thought he Amara. was asking what, um, like, what Amara painted on the yeah. pumpkin. Is what I was, never mentioned Amara. You just said painted her face. Who do you face. think me and my mom just painted pumpkins? Oh, my God. You're making it weirder. Painting face. That's what she's, she's not referring to pumpkins. There's nothing sexual about this conversation. I was with my family over the weekend. <laughs> it's around Halloween. We painted pumpkins with the children in our family. Painted pumpkins. Uh, and Amara so the priest called took it. the paintbrush and instead of painting any pumpkins or any markers on any paper, completely covered her face. Like Was the paint black? It was very close to it. <laughs> Let's go. But she was really good. It almost like she put blue lipstick on. It was very creepy. I can't mm-hmm. lie. Like, I saw a demon child and I got really nervous. Did you take a picture? I do have a picture. I mean, obviously, we're not going to put it on the screen. But yeah, just but to me. That's yeah, it cute, was, though. The internet will find it in 20 years. Show her black face. Yeah. Um, Big oh. red lips. <laughs> <laughs> They'll find it. Don't worry. It's in your phone now, but it'll be on the internet in 20 years. Would you consider that black face? That was just the beginning. It's more Joker. Yeah, that's more Joker. <laughs> that's not black face. You should have seen the end result when I was done, though. I then oh you made, I put for her Halloween costume oh okay yeah so, oh yeah what you land on get, you have get a her ahead of uh, her cancellation Roy do you have a costume doesn't everyone yet? from Facebook have a blackface photo from when they were in high school of course <laughs> do you guys have a group costume yet this year yeah I think we're gonna go we did um Ghostbusters last year because she's Marshmallow um but she's really obsessed with Mickey Mouse Club now mm. so I think she's gonna be Minnie Mouse we're not gonna go overthink it okay so I, who should I be though I haven't ordered mine yet do yeah, I go straight does. as Mickey or no, you should the be the, the big guy, Walt Disney. Daffy Duck. <laughs> duck ass. <laughs> yeah, you should be Walt Disney. Yo, I like how you're thinking out of the box. I never even considered that. You should be Walt Disney. Kia can go be Donald Duck and I'll be Walt Disney. Yeah. Especially with the times. Exactly. Walter Disney. <laughs> Walter. Walter S. Diz. <laughs> All right, we're back. We, we considered that I was going to be Walt Disney and mm. I would just get just a regular old man suit. Yeah. That's mm. A Hugo Boss jacket. Yeah. Um, and Kia, she can figure it out. But yeah, what about you guys? I Halloween plans? Oh, you guys too Halloween. cool for Halloween? People don't dress up anymore? Well, I'm, I thought about it, but I, I don't know. I don't know what I would want to be for Halloween or who I would want to be. I, I want to be somebody a like... a question, I think. Like, a, like a, 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 a current, I guess, figure in a movie or something. Mm-hmm. I was thinking like that. You should go as Kendrick. It's too many, it's too many serial killers. It's Kendrick Lamar? Yeah. No. Okay. Why would I do that? He's the boogeyman. 
All right, my bad. Why, why are you guys giving me bad looks? I'm nice. in a good mood today. Okay, what would you guys be for Halloween? I've shot on. I have no plans. I want to be a Game of Thrones character, but I don't have the patience and the time to really curate. Like people really be out here curating looks for Halloween, and I don't have the patience or the time for that shit. So I'm just gonna be a, a whore ass bunny at the Lotto concert. Just put on lingerie and some bunny ears. ears. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. But I thought everyone in Game of Thrones is like ass naked the whole time, anyways. No, aren't they all they have slutty mad, outfits? Mad clothes on. Oh, okay. Mad clothes on. Yeah, that's what made those sex scenes so awkward because they have to take off like 50 layers. <laughs> they were watching this one dude take off armor like piece by piece to have sex. Like, bro, pussy dried up by now. I'm not yeah. going through all that. That's why I used to hate like those Kappa cruises and like the formal events because like I'm not good at taking buttons off. That would be a lot. Bow tie, then that top one because it would always be too like slim around my neck. That was always awkward. We'd be in a Kappa at a Halloween party? We would do like formal parties like oh. where you actually dress up and, you know, People would consensually fornicate afterwards. Mm -hmm. And to get out of all of that stuff is tough. Like that's usually the, fire, the pussy though. might be dry when I have to go back into the bathroom in the mirror and try to take off this. Having H to do this that this in the mirror is button. crazy. No, just leave it on. Let me choke you with it. <laughs> Sorry. It's Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> My bad. Did you guys do anything over the weekend? Uh yeah, I had a great weekend. Um uh, Boz was in town and they did a Sudanese uh, fundraiser, uh, which is incredible. Oh, nice. Um, there's an amazing group of women put it together. It was at this amazing event space in Brooklyn. Uh, MoMA DJed. Boz performed like five or six records. They raised a shit ton of money. Um, Love that. It was really, really fun uh, and educational. And they were selling paintings and photographs from Sudanese artists. It was like very informative. I learned a lot, danced a lot. It was fun. Yeah, I saw the stuff on your IG. It looked really cool. Was yeah. it catered too? They, yeah, so the I think the the women that were hosting it either uh, either they made it or they had other Sudanese people in the community make it, but it was all homemade Sudanese food. Oh yeah, and the line the entire event was wrapped around like it was. They I don't know how much food they made, but they fed hundreds of people. It was great. Oh, I love that. Yeah. After you guys did all the good deeds, what what fuck shit did you get into after that? Uh, there were your, yeah. your crew. <laughs> there were plans to because there's, there's a work life balance there. <laughs> yeah, that ended it too, which we stayed to the to the end. We were hanging out like downstairs before like the let out, and then um, there was we were either going to go to Disclosure, which was at the Knockdown Center, which I wouldn't know any of these words. Disclosure is a big like uh, DJ group. They're great. Oh, they, you were talking about the group. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. the venue. Yeah, no, 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 Disclosure is the group. Yeah, and then there was another thing, but that was further away, and then this is what I love about this crew. We dubbed both of them and just went to a dive bar until they shut down until four in the morning. Nice. It was very nice. It was a good weekend. Fiends. That yeah, fiend fun. shit. Uh, Demaris, you meal prepped. Thank you for bringing in food today. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. It was great. I made. I haven't had your cooking in a very long time. Red beans and rice. Um, I yeah, I cooked. I vlogged. Got my vlogging shit off. I you know, I stayed in the house. I didn't leave other than go go into the gym and Whole Foods. Yeah, I was in the house this weekend. Looking oh, like and I Christian. went to the Knicks yesterday. Oh yeah, we saw that. We look good. Feet were touching the the floor. I was row five. Uh, could you hear what DiVincenzo really said at the line? So, yes. Yeah. For those was, that don't he, know, oh, he was John, just traded yeah. to the Timberwolves. The Timberwolves were playing the Knicks. DiVincenzo yelled something to the Knicks bench while he was shooting a free throw. And Julius, uh, who he didn't play. But it was cool. What I love about Julius was like, he was all the old Knicks staff, you know, like the people that really are running the show behind the scenes, uh, were all coming up to him. And he was like, so happy to like reunite and see everyone again. It was like cool to see them interact with people that they clearly, you know, had formed relationships with over the years. Uh, even Chenzo was ready for the spotlight, man. He was talking shit all game. Him and Edwards were running. The D Devo was pretty much running the point. Edwards was kind of playing the two. And I mean, Edwards is a fucking Jesus Christ. He's going to dominate the league. Uh, but it was a really good game. They did not play like a preseason game. They were all very competitive. Cat, he'll get like he's there's still flashes of him being a little too soft for my liking. But he hit some big threes. We're good. The Knicks are going to be great this year. I can go on and on about them, but. You didn't go to the game, though? To the Knicks game? Yeah. No. Okay. That's Fuck the Knicks. Well, but the Timberwolves were there. Not, Julius. No, Timberwolves, man. <laughs> Julius, man. I was going to say, what's your loyalty? Player. Still the oh, Lakers? Yeah, still a Lakers fan. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah, we suck too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Ronnie and uh, LeBron played together. I did not watch it at all. And we can get out sports now. Yeah, I watched some of that. Uh, the first game that they played together. Um, it was cool to just see that. Uh, but Bronny, you know, is, he has he has a long way to go. 
And uh, hopefully he'll he'll get there. But he'll, he'll have all the support and all the access to get better and train and things like that. But right now he's, you know, you can tell he's still trying to catch up with the NBA game. Um, but, you know, give him grace. He had a, a, a health scare just a year ago. Yeah. Where he didn't, you know, basketball aside, just making sure he's he's okay health-wise. Um, but, you know, he, he'll get there, though. But he has a long way to go. Because I'm looking at some of the other teams, other rookies that are playing. Um and you know they look good. So Bronny has a he has a, he has a ways to go. But it was cool to see first father son teammates in the NBA um, on the floor together. So that was cool. Yeah, still. Uh, over the weekend after we left the studio on Thursday, Rory had texted me a conversation that we were meant to have on that that last Friday <laughs> episode, but um, we're gonna have now. Uh, the idea that the big three, Cole, Kendrick, and Drake, have all been putting out. Their last few releases have all not been on proper DSP releases, but doing so on either Twitter or Instagram, um, kind of releasing it on their own terms, on their own pages, which Rory put into this tweet here. If you want to read it, Rory, it's your words. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, again, we didn't get around to this last week, but this was a conversation that I wanted to have and have been noticing outside of like the regular rap beef shit. These guys being the three most important rappers, period, right now with the most power, the most leverage, the most everything. I think we should also note while we're gossiping about everything else that the last releases from Cole and Kendrick aren't on DSPs. Drake's last few drops were released on his website first. Even if the three biggest rappers aren't getting along, they're all on the same page as far as testing the waters on how we receive music. Even the, the Collard Green Daylight and J. Cole record. I saw the, the ad, it said available on all DSPs, couldn't find it on a single fucking DSP. Everything is being released away from the machine. And I think that's noteworthy, but also important in what they're doing here with everything that's going on. Not like us, of course, eventually had to get put up there as well as all these other records. But them doing it this way, I think is a way to collect data. I think all of them are going to go different routes come release time with their albums too. I don't know if we're going to get Kendrick's album immediately on DSPs. I don't know if we're going to get the next Drake release not on 100 gigs. Mm -hmm. Cole, I can almost guarantee the way they roll out music, that's not going straight to DSPs right away. Mm -hmm. I think we're going back to more of that SoundCloud mixtape wave that was of 10 years ago mm -hmm. before we were forced to have to put every last fucking thing onto DSPs. And I think that's going to make shit a lot more fun. There's less clearance samples. There's, there's less politics. When you go that route, you can figure out what works and then put some of the records on DSPs. I think this will make rap fun again if we can go this route as well. Um, Stove God, he just, he released his his last album mm -hmm. on his website. And Rock Marciano has been doing this forever. Yeah, I wasn't Rock is the I wasn't suggesting the that these guys and like Drake is the first one to put a website up and no, be like, saying if they're doing it, then clearly this is the three biggest changing. rappers that you would think no matter what have to put their music up on DSPs. Like they have stake within DSPs, majors, everything. Mm -hmm. The biggest moment in hip hop in God knows how long, none of it has been part of DSPs. Mm -hmm. To the point that we have heard rumors of Spotify trying to make Not Like Us on every play playlist and adding it to everyone's algorithms. Like they're trying to make themselves part of this moment. Mm -hmm. I know every Apple title, everyone is like, yeah, what the fuck? The biggest moment in hip hop, we had nothing to do with it. Yeah. It, it changes the tide a bit. I think that's the most noteworthy thing from this entire battle. What does it what do, what do you think it does to the industry as far as if the three uh the three guys are are releasing the music the way they are? What does that mean for the rest of the artists? Do they follow suit? Can they follow suit? Because a lot of people that's, that's my thing. I don't know if anyone can shift it in hip hop, it would be these three, obviously. But I don't know if that trickles down to the rest of the music industry because everyone else in the music industry needs the community. Mm. Like it's it's tough to put out 100 gigs.ovo.blogspot mm -hmm. and have the traffic that Drake has. Mm -hmm. You're going to miss out, like, just because I'm on this podcast, I'll bring in my album. I know it has nothing to do with this. I wanted to just put my album out without putting out singles. They said, you will reach maybe 20% of your audience if you do it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's me going to the community. Mm -hmm. The DSPs still allow you to put eyes on your music that no one else would see unless it was direct to consumer. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if everyone can do this. I'm just glad to see the people with power 
are starting to do it. And, and not only that, and this is something we had mentioned when we spoke about this uh, before, these guys are also in a very unique situation, obviously with their reach, but also they all don't have labeled deals. They're working for themselves. So they also don't owe it to a major or you know anybody else outside of themselves and their teams to, to service their music anywhere. So the difference is like with Rory saying, even if you're a successful, like a theater touring artist, you still don't have the agency to be like, I don't want to put this out on Apple, Spotify. I want to put this out independently without your label intervening and being like, that's not, you're just not going to do that. We're not going to let you have, have that moment. So these guys are operating on a different level in terms of they can kind of move how they please. We've talked about it before, Rory. If an artist the caliber of a Drake decided to go independent. Yeah. What does that do, do to the... DSPs, first of all, because we know how much he generates to DSPs, uh, whether it's features, whether it's his own music. Um, he's one of the most monthly listen listened to artists on mm. DSPs. If he decides to go independent, does that cripple the music industry? Does that cripple the DSPs? Um because we're already in, seeing signs in, in of time, people going away okay. from the DSP. Not, not, not immediately whatsoever. But I think in time, if everyone stuck to that, yes, it would cripple. Because if we go back to our TikTok and Universal conversation, where we've seen every tech company fold to the music industry because mm -hmm. they have the catalog, mm -hmm. and TikTok said, okay, we don't give a fuck. We don't need the Universal catalog, which includes Drake and Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Let's point out, two of the biggest artists, a tech company said, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. If the biggest artists move forward in this trend, yes, it would change over time where tech companies wouldn't need to go to DSPs or majors to get anything cleared. They could mm -hmm. go direct to, to an artist because they would have their catalog to sell. So in time, but that would take like 20, 30 years, I feel like. Yeah. Um, but I think this is a, a cool step because like Julian said, this is the first time all three of them are out of a major deal and in a licensing deal. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to pretend like I know anything about their licensing deal. But I think even with uh, When the Party's Over, that was the, the name of the Kendrick song. Yeah. With the sample clearance there, I don't think anyone that at Universal with his licensing deal wanted to touch it. We can't really profit off it. That's too many samples. But it still went out, still to impact. Mm -hmm. Same thing with 616. That never hit DSPs. Too many samples on that. I know his licensing deal probably sat there and said, I'm not clearing that shit. What would be the point? Mm -hmm. I'm not dealing with this back and forth shit. Put it up on Instagram, put it on YouTube and let someone else have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I think now the licensing companies within Universal are now scrambling to figure out what they would do if artists decide to go this route, even within their licensing deals. If they're not coming out ready to clear it with this budget, no sample music, what's your point here? I don't need you to distribute anything. Yeah. The fuck I need a license. And the value of an artist traditionally, at least for the majors, uh, the value is always in catalog. So... The major labels make like some odd 80 something, if not one more percent of their revenue from back catalog. So you're very often like with these guys, even if it's these new one off singles, you're the money's coming from the project Drake, Drake dropped 10 years ago, really. Yeah. Which, you know, so even I'm just looking at it, pulled up some quick data of, of the 2010s from 2010 to 20, 2020, 2019, pardon me. Drake was the number one streamed artist uh, with 36.3 billion streams number two being Post Malone with 18.9 billion. So we're looking at, you know, a lion's share of revenue in streaming from DSPs just coming from Drake alone. That's, I mean, I just want to put that out there. How, how, so just to clarify, how are the artists benefiting from, or how do you think the artists will end up benefiting from this? Because yes, obviously the data, but what else? Um, how else are they Like currently with, with what, they're doing right now. I think mm -hmm. the only thing is straight up testing the waters to see how it's received, how many people see it, mm -hmm. um, if it affects the casual fan, if they see it. It's really about eyes, I think, at this point. Mm -hmm. What age groups are going after it. It's, I think it's just data collecting. And what a perfect time to use a rap beef where everyone's clicking everything because they want to see the next gossipy fucking bar. Mm -hmm. So it's a perfect mm -hmm. time to at least, with the most traffic, figure out if this is something that can work and to have conversations with Instagram. Have conversations with Twitter. Elon's putting up full fucking episodes. He's a whole news network. With the Tucker Carlson puts his shit out on Twitter. Yeah. yeah. You put a whole album out on Twitter right now. I think everything is just shifting once you get out of these slave deals that you can just try shit. 
mm-hmm. to see what happens. And I think they're already talking to tech companies. I could see TikTok has exclusive rights to use my sounds for this album and no one else. Mm-hmm. You may not actually receive the album on there, but that's the only app that where you can use the on sound. your video for mm-hmm. J. Cole's new album. Mm-hmm. I think that's where things are are shifting. It's going to be interesting to see, you talk about licensing, it's going to be interesting to see how they integrate AI into these deals moving forward. Like where an artist, yeah. you can use his likeness or you can license his likeness where he's not even, they say, oh, we're going to put you on this song with this artist, but you don't have to come to the studio. You don't have to like, we got a writer. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, we're going to use your likeness. We're going to yeah. gonna brand it as it being you. Mm. It's going to sound just like you. Because I think that's where a lot of this shit is going. And I think that's like a separate licensing deal in itself. Mm. Like, all right, you can license my music and my catalog to do with what you want. If you want to be able to sell that to TikTok, if you want to be able to sell that to other apps. I think there will be a whole AI licensing agreement too. You can use my voice with these writers and Mm -hmm. I get to approve this song, this verse, Mm -hmm. and it can say featuring my name. Right. Which I don't know what that looks like. I'm not that deep in the music industry to know what they're going through right now with that. Because that has to be a thing. Oh, it's definitely a thing. Of course. Mm -hmm. We're hearing it. I'm just curious if that's going to be folded into a regular deal. Is that a whole new publishing company? Like that's a that's another part of it. It would like if I'm in a pub deal, which has to do with what I write in my music. Mm -hmm. What's this AI deal where you you're using my name and my voice as likeness Mm -hmm. and someone else is writing it and you're pushing it through your program? Mm -hmm. That has to be that's a whole new publishing company to me. I think that it uh, you know a couple years ago when everybody started to sell their catalogs Mm. and I remember we were. We were talking. We were like, why? Why is everybody doing this? And that made sense yeah. to sell your catalog so that you know you can only have you don't have to do with one person that owns all of it. If you ever want to do anything with the music, we that was a, a part of it. But I also feel like uh, even coming up to you know the DS uh, the way artists are not releasing on DSPs right away. They have their websites or whatever. I think all of this is connected somehow. Mm. I think it's tied in some way. Obviously, it's things that we're not privy to yet. But I do think it's interesting to watch these things happen in real time and then connect them to what has already happened. Because they tried the AI thing with that artist that was, uh, what was it, the white the white rapper? Yeah. Oh, remember, remember they that. tried that shit years ago? <laughs> they tried that. Mm-hmm. Everybody kind of like frowned at that. Like, that's a little weird. You know yeah. what I mean? But they, they're already showing us like, by the time we see it, they've already had these meetings and these conversations for at least two, three years already. Yeah. So whatever is happening now, whatever's going on in those rooms now, I think that we're just starting to see some of the the the, the breadcrumbs of a change coming in the way artists release music, the way artists create music, and the way we have to go and receive the music. Um, and again, I'm really not trying to have a specific artist conversation or who's charting more or whatever, but that's kind of my point. Like, Circadian Rhythm, that's the name of the Drake song, right? Circadian Rhythm, yeah. I see everyone on the timeline saying, yo, it's number 75 on the chart. I don't think he gives a single fuck. I don't think Kendrick gives a single fuck that y'all think that uh, Let the Party Die flopped. I don't think Cole is looking at a single number of where Port's going to end up. This is all to see how people are receiving music and how people are clicking to listen to it. Mm. I don't think they give a fuck what charts and what doesn't right now. What yeah, the charts might not necessarily matter uh, in the game that they're playing. Because, um, I mean, charts are attached to... DSPs, mm-hmm. physicals, YouTube, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I, that's not the game I think they're looking into right now well, whatsoever. That, yeah. <laughs> that stuff matters to, to, again, like to more so to playlisting. So, okay, this charts, this is number one on, uh, what's it, today's top hits or like Rap Nation, then it matters. But when you're not playing those games, when you remove yourself from those games, then charts become null and void. Like it doesn't, it's a it's a stat. It's a measure. It's a measure that holds no value because we're not playing those games anymore. It's a measure they made up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's it's, like, it's something to really make them feel important to 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 bold in like their hold in the whole culture. Like a, a a excuse me. A playlist is really a DSP's way of saying this is what we deem to be the culture. It's them trying to create the culture and control some sort of a narrative. But fuck. The narrative that they created will just do it on our it's, own. It's the bank setting the price of the dollar. It's the cops investigating themselves after they commit a crime. It's yeah. the same shit as far as Billboard and artists. 
and it's attached to everything that the industry controls and owns, which is DSPs because the majors have percentage of all of that. I think they're all playing a completely different game and I think it affects everyone. I'm not sure it's going to be a major effect anytime soon, but I see the breadcrumbs that are being laid by the three biggest artists in the biggest moment in hip hop that we've had. And I think it's noteworthy. And I think it's something they all notice within the three of them. Mm. I think they probably all have some disdain for each other, but I think they've been following suit with each one. All right, you're doing just YouTube for this one? All right, I'll put this up on IG. I think they're subconsciously playing the same game. Yeah, I mean, they would have to be. I mean, they're three of the, the, the biggest artists. Um, so I'm, they have the same information when it comes to certain things, I'm sure. Yeah. They have relationships with some of the you know people that are controlling uh, all of these platforms and things like that. So they, they're privy to the information. Uh, but again, I do think that it probably is a way to test mm -hmm. and see uh, what their audience is doing and if their audience is you know, gravitating towards whatever platforms that they choose to release the music on. But uh, the, the bottom line, I think, here is that we can clearly see that there is a change that is now here as far as the way artists are choosing to put their music out. It's also, well, actually, let me not say safe because it's definitely the least safe option as possible. But I think it's the safest option for optics because we've seen that fans just pick a side and the internet was always weird, but this battle has made the internet weirder than I've ever seen in my entire life. People that never even really liked hip hop to begin with are now like completely choosing their alliance to mm -hmm. a side of an artist, mm -hmm. which is nuts to me. If you go the different route through your website or through another channel like Instagram or something along those lines, you're not gonna come back with big numbers whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, mm -hmm. just because it's an, a new way for people to count music or receive it. That whole who went number one, who sold more than who is out the conversation with the big three now. Mm. To me, we're, we're getting away from that whole numbers and statistics bullshit that everyone keeps bringing up in this battle. Like, oh, it doesn't matter if Drake replies, look at all these number ones. Oh, it doesn't matter if uh, they need him. Kendrick so went on tour and sold this much. And who gives a fuck? Yeah. Cole sold 400,000 first week. That was the most that year. Who gives a fuck? Mm hmm it now becomes Those old about styles. the music yeah, and it becomes about new ways to change the music industry for real, mm -hmm. not just who has the best music. Now we're getting into Prince territory. Now you're really a legend. Now you're really changing how artists behind you will be able to benefit off mm -hmm. the risk that you take. Mm -hmm. At that point, who gives a fuck out of the big three who's, who's number one, two, or three? That takes away everything. So even though it's not the safest bet, I think it's the safest for the gossipy hip hop bullshit that's been going on this year. Mm -hmm. It's done now. But it's only two. It's not big three. Well, f fair. Yeah. Just to, I was, I was so. Did y'all look at any comments over the weekend? I was too scared after that that episode. Why? Why were you scared? I don't know. <laughs> I was painting pumpkins. You scared man. of comments? No. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I actually got the best two nights of sleep I've gotten probably this year, yeah, this past man. weekend. <laughs> Don't be scared of them comments, man. Jump in. I think I've ever been scared of the comments. <laughs> I laugh at them at this point. But <laughs> I, how did people receive our our debate? Uh, you asking me? I don't know. I'm asking you know, the room. I don't. I don't. I, don't I, I definitely don't. I'm not in comments like that. Okay. But no, I'm, I look for you to tell me like what they saying in them streets and Reddit. The Reddit. When the last time you was on Reddit? It's been a really long time. Yeah. I used to be heavy in the streets, but I have not opened that app. Months. months. A few people like stopped me like, in, you know, in the streets and was talking about the uh, the whole back and forth. That You know, it was cool. It was interesting to hear people's perspectives on it. Um, it's always fun when people are talking about A lot of people are talking about the same thing. But it's also cool to hear people's perspectives and their point of view on shit. Um, it's all in fun, man. I have fun, I have fun with that, those type of conversations. Whenever you ask somebody, pick a side. <laughs> And you start stuttering and, and yell about it. <laughs> yeah, pick a side and yell about it. I don't yell have a side. Over there. I, all right, where, where's the side for the people that don't have a side? Where's the side for people that don't? Yeah, have like a what side? part of the school dance is that in? Uh, I mean, you probably in the rafters. You sit okay. in the bleachers. That's cool. Yeah, that's where Taylor Swift started. Yeah, sit in the bleachers, man. I but wear, you gotta get I wear loud, a t-shirt. Loud in the bleachers short skirts. Too, You gotta make a lot of noise in the bleachers. Though. Those are the cheap seats. Oh yeah, you gotta make let people know you're in the building. I think those are the most important people. For sure. I'm a returning customer for all the artists here. Yeah. I don't, I don't care matter. what happens. Um, Russ was in, in the Twitter streets over the weekend as well. Shout out to Russ, man. Love I see Russ. some Friend couple of tweets show. from Russ. Um, 
Russ is one of those guys that he has he he's somebody to talk to about all this DSP shit because he's been doing he's been playing a different game for a long time as well. Mm. He's been playing the independent game, doing shit a lot of uh, the lifting himself with his label and things like that. Um, so yeah, I saw him in the, in the, in, the, in the streets. Uh, well, in the tweets, mm-hmm. talking to people streets, back and forth. And that's the streets. That's the social media streets. Uh, Julian, you want to read the the tweet that I I feel like this was the conclusion of the whole back and forth uh, with what was yeah. going on. Yeah, it was a back and forth Rush was having with a with a journalist, and and the tweet, the her last tweet before his response that went viral was Russ is tweeting at me like he's talented. I have to I have to laugh. What journalist is rushing to interview Russ? Right, wait, 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 wait. Slow down. First of all, who is this that's saying this? It was just a random person on Twitter that. All right, so see, that's my thought. Well, she's a journalist. I don't want to discredit her profession. She's a was proper. She discrediting Russ's legit... profession? Yeah. Well, no, I know. I she's mean, I'm not. I'm not discrediting not, arena. I'm not it's okay to discredit her, her, but she is a, a actual. She's not a random person on okay, Twitter. Okay, well, let that's me let point. me correct her. Russ is he is talent. He is talented. So she's saying Russ is tweeting at me like he's talented. What does that mean? Russ isn't talented. That can't be what she's alluding to. That's what she said. That is what she's. That is absolutely fucking crazy. Russ is talented. You can say you don't like Russ. You don't like his music. That's your opinion. But you can't say Russ isn't talented. Russ is definitely a talented artist. Well, she had to laugh. (laughs) Yeah. So Russ uh, just ethered her with. he, He replied and said, "You are a journalist. Your career does not exist without artists or athletes or whoever it is you journal about." My life and all artists and career exist without y'all. Y'all get too bold on here and forget what role you actually even play in the grand scheme of things. Your job is to stand on the sideline and wait for other people to do shit in order for you to even have a job. Relax. Mm. Mm. Mm, Sam Russ. And this was, I don't, I don't know if you were uh, with us at Manny's birthday at that time. We were having a conversation that a lot of streamers, media people, not, it's not a, a new thing. It's been going on for a long time. Start to feel like they're above the artist or bigger than the artist or bigger than the genre or bigger than anything we talk about. And that's where I think the decline starts to happen once you feel like you're bigger than what you discuss. Because Russ nailed it. And I don't take offense to anything that he said. Mm. If you take offense to what Russ said, you're part of the problem. You do think you're bigger than the genre you talk about, he's t- he's which, is, which is a weird narcissistic thing. But... He's correct. If we don't took, move unless they do something. If you took offense to what Russ said, you're who he's talking to. Oh, she had an awful reply. Sorry, I'm just backlogging the information. Jesus. I forgot my tweets. She said, that. Russ, this is an incredible this is an incorrect statement, babe. I could fart out a think piece tomorrow and it would make this entire app shake. No music you make will ever have that impact. Let's not lie on me like that, LMFAO. And I'm also not saying that there aren't streamers, podcasters, radio hosts, whatever in media that can just off the cuff entertain people and talk about shit that has nothing to do with music and still be okay. Mm -hmm. But let's not all pretend like within hip hop media, music media, this culture as a whole, that our biggest moments and biggest discussions don't come off what the artists are doing and the music that's coming out. Those are our most important conversations. Those Those are our conversations that get the most clicks. That's what matters the most. And I'm not saying Media needs to bow down to artists or look at them like gods or they can do whatever the fuck they want. It is a two-way street. Artists also need media people to push their music. But to shit on artists and like pretend like they're not a huge reason on why we even exist is insane to me. I get Russ's frustration here. We really exist based off what they do. Mm -hmm. We are a huge part of promoting what they do and keeping that momentum but not this is because we all love music at least i can speak for me i'm sorry i got into this shit because i love music Mm. and i think that's the root of some of the greatest media people and greatest journalists from inception Mm -hmm. they got into this shit because they loved hip-hop yeah so i i see what he's saying i think the problem is when you talk about you know this day and age now with so many platforms and people you know having cameras and mics in their faces people start to feel like they're something that they're not. People start to feel like they're on the same level as these artists. Mm-hmm. They're as important as these artists are. Um, and I think that's, you know, what, what Russ was speaking to here is that, you know, you're here to talk about what it is that the creators are creating and putting out and things like that. Um, first and foremost, we're all consumers. Yeah. Even if you're a creative, you you consume, uh, you know, other art, you consume, you know, something that somebody else creates and puts out. So, 
Start there. We're all consumers. I just think that, you know, Russ is speaking to more of what this uh what this young lady was saying as far as, you know, she could make the app sh- app shake if she creates a think piece. And Russ's music could never do that. Like, I think she's just a little out of touch with that remark right there. But, you know, I like her confidence. And, and misguided in what Russ is saying. Like, let's not even just put music. Like, Stephen A. Smith is bigger than certain athletes. He's more famous. Mm-hmm. He's richer, mm-hmm. has more power, more recognizable than a lot of athletes. Mm-hmm. But is Stephen A. Smith bigger than the NBA and the NFL? No. And athletics as a whole? No. Absolutely not. And I think that's what Russ was really trying to get out, get at initially. Like, he's not saying journalists exist because Russ makes music. Right. Because of the shit that we all love, mm-hmm. which starts with the artist, is why you guys have a job. Yeah. <laughs> and why you guys talk about shit. And not, and not saying that, you know, I, I don't believe that Russ was trying to allude to her being a journalist is not an important role. No, I of don't course think that's not. what he was alluding to. I think he was more so saying, like, yo, I think that, you know, there are lines here, there are levels here. Um, and again, you should kind of like stay in your lane. But when you start saying things like Russ isn't talented, I mean, that's your opinion. And she's entitled to that, uh, with like everybody else is. But I think in this conversation, in this back and forth, that was a, that was a shot. You know what I mean? That she was trying you're, to demean Russ. In, you're in focused regard. on that response. I'm focused on Russ. This is an incorrect statement, babe. First of all, don't call me babe. We're not babes. I could fart out a think piece tomorrow and it would make this entire app shake. Mm-hmm. Elon put out robots and it didn't really even shake like that. Yeah. And it's his app. Yeah. No music you make will ever have that impact. Let's not lie on me like that. Um, I'm not here to, I don't know much about this young lady. She could be extremely important and amazing journalist. I'm not here to discredit her whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, has, your, has your work ever sold out Radio City two nights in a row? I mean, you got you to check. She may have had a think piece that moved some tickets at Radio City. You don't know. I mean, but I feel like that's not an equal comparison because journalists don't sell out. She compared it. She said she could make a think piece that'll make this whole app shake. Your music could never do that. She made the comparison yeah, first. She's saying okay. that on a, on a platform where media is in, important and, and she's also in media, I could do I could make a bigger media imp, impact in media than you can. Fair. Okay. Off that sentence, yes. I don't Bad agree comparison. With her, but I'm just but saying about the here. music that Russ has released mainly through Twitter, SoundCloud, has gotten to a point where people will pay to sell out Radio City to see him. Mm-hmm. That's making shit shake when you post something on Twitter. Mm-hmm. The response is selling out Radio City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And let's not act like Russ doesn't make this app, quote unquote, shake once a month. Russ always has a, a take that either pisses people off or has people talking once a month. Mm-hmm. He makes this hip hop Twitter app shake non fucking stop. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe I have her fucked up. Oh well, and and we can also not to be the the guy that falls for metrics, but just comparatively, she's got forty three and a half thousand followers to Russ's two million. I mean, people with ten followers make the app shake with crazy takes. You never shook that before, Julian. I've shaken the app. Something wrong with the pussy. Shook the shit out this app. Mm. Probably more than her biggest piece of work. And I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> you know, know his captions on... Uh... <laughs> Never mind. Invisible lens? <laughs> <laughs> Those invisible lens <laughs> captions shake the Instagram app. Um, <laughs> what was his original point that she was counteracting? Like, what was his... This was point? This is the initial tweet that sparked the entire... It was basically him kind of reiterating what the structure of a journalist's integrity should be in, in hip hop media. Journalists won interviews with artists and things like that. Um, but he basically broke down a reason why some journalists don't get interviews. He said, number one, most journalists don't have their own platform. So that some, so that somewhat forces the artists to fund and produce the interview themselves. He said he's, he's done it because he sees the value in it, but he understands if an artist doesn't want to pay for their own interview, uh, number two, naturally, as artists, we have shit to say and we want what we have to say to reach the most amount of people. So going to where the majority of people's eyes are, streamers, et cetera, is attractive. Number three, nobody cares about reading interviews on magazine outlets anymore. Video interviews are king and video interviews cost money. C point number one. And number four, he said, re- really, the only solution is journalists, just like everyone else, 
have to build up their brand, fan base, and name themselves so that they can attract artists to their platform or artists just invest money in producing their own interviews with respected journalists and putting it on their own platform, which Russ has done with BDOT a few times. I don't see anything wrong that he said no. in that whatsoever. But Russ, and, we, and what did she just take? No one's trying to go to Russ for an interview. I don't I even understand she, how she read she re- all that and had that reply. Okay, so she said paying someone to interview you isn't journalism, it's marketing. You want journalists to function as your PR, hire a better publicist maybe. So I get, she should she should have worded that better, but I understood where she's coming from with that, with that response. Paying somebody to interview you isn't journalism because journalism is supposed to be object, uh, like... Oh, then she doesn't know about journalism. Objective. Yep, yeah, but <laughs> traditionally, real journalism is supposed to be objective. If you pay me for an interview, then I'm not being objective because there are certain things that I'm going to... You can pay me not to ask you. So if you're paying for your own interview, that's kind of like PR. I mean, Paul, All interviews are PR. Politicians do that all the time. I was going to say, that's the that's thing. That's been in the source, Double XL. Like, there's the journalistic version of payola exists. For sure. Favor yes. for a favor. Yo, if you put this artist on the cover, the source, I'll guarantee you three interviews with these artists that are also on our label. Like, mm-hmm. it's been a bartering system in journalism, not just hip hop, period, forever. Yes, but you can't get mad at her for saying, hey, this is, when I go to journalism school, this is what they teach you. Journalism, real journalism is to be objective. That's in the report. Not, so on what, what's what, if somebody pays for an interview, let's say a label pays a platform to have their artist on there, what makes it not objective? Well, I think because there's been plenty of, of times when artists have come on a platform for free and then PR will hand them a list of shit they can't talk about. Mm-hmm. Why does a money exchange have to matter in that? Because if, if everything is is nothing's off limits, but they pay for the interview and I can ask whatever the fuck I want. Why is that not journalism? Because, for example, with the Tyler interview, let's say bring up the Tyler interview when they asked her about being black, being colored, whatever, right? Being that they didn't, the, they, I think it was the Breakfast Club, being that they didn't pay the Breakfast Club for that interview, that footage still comes out of her just not answering the question, her shaking her head, her looking back at her PR for help because the Breakfast Club owns that footage because they were not paid for that footage. Mm-hmm. Now, for example, if they were paid for that interview and that interview was funded, then that they the people who pay have complete com- complete control. Like they have control of what comes out, how it's released or what gets cut out all of that. They don't you don't have that if you don't pay for the interview. There was plenty of labels that paid for the mics and the source for album reviews and the source still own their content. I yes. think everyone I think she's very confused on what actually happens in journalism. That's it happens, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that everybody does that, and it doesn't mean that that's the way it's supposed to happen. It's like saying there's a crooked cops. Yes, there are crooked cops, but it's not supposed to be like that. With the with the, the Breakfast Club of example, it's not supposed to be like that. There's kind of like the unwritten, untalked about rule that if we bring in an artist, what is a uh, Tyler Atlantic? The creator? I'm not sure. Tyler. No. no. Tyler. Oh, Tyler. <laughs> no, Tyler. <laughs> Tyler. Tyler the creator. Yeah. Uh, he took the hard ER off um, he's with Epic okay there's an unwritten rule with Epic being under Sony, so Sony that yeah. they will continue to bring their artists to the Breakfast Club and vice versa mm-hmm. not trying to belittle the Breakfast Club but they all they have relationships with every single label some of them have even worked for labels while they were on the Breakfast Club mm-hmm. there's an unwritten rule don't ask these questions and we'll continue to bring our artists in for safer interviews. Mm-hmm. Again, not discrediting The Breakfast Club because Charlemagne did a great job his whole career of asking the questions we really wanted to hear. But let's say any radio station. There's no currency exchange with that. That's just a relationship moving forward. Don't go against the rules that our PR at our label told you. Mm-hmm. And we'll continue to bring artists to you. There's no currency exchange there. Okay, there is a current. You just name the currency. The relationship is currency. There's not money, but the relationship is currency. You're giving something for getting something and getting something, but that does not make it objective journalism. So, that's I think that's so why fi- you're missing. So find the point. me the objective journalism. I'm, I was there's say plenty what? of it. That's what I'm trying journalists. to get. At. Like just m- maybe not always in the hip hop space, but journalism as a whole. We're not only talking about journalism in music. Like, journalism as a whole is supposed to be objective. Yes, like I said, there are crooked cops and there are people who skate around the rules to get, you know, obviously to do what you have to do to get shit done. There's been questions we haven't asked that we should have. But 
it doesn't mean that that's always the right thing to do and that it was made to be like that. Journalism was not created <clears throat> to be like that. And I think that that was her point where it's like, if you're paying for an interview, that's not journalism. But okay. To that conversation, there's also been times we've gotten lists and said no to interviews because we don't want to interview that person if we can't talk about that. Yes. Thank you for your integrity. Cool. But there's also been times where they won't give us a list and we can just say whatever the fuck we want. So I don't really see, what do you mean? Where's you, you can say whatever you want because you aren't being paid for the interview. Are you seeing what I'm saying? No one's paying you. But that's you said not... currency was taken out. It's relationships. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused about what you're confused about. So maybe I'm missing it. I'm confused about how you don't understand her point. Even if you don't agree with it, I'm confused on how you don't understand her point. Just off the simple of if you are paying for an interview, that is not an objective interview, period. You have creative control of the interview. That That's is also not, not always the case. Then name one interview that there was not some form of relationship or actual currency exchanged, whether it be the conglomerate that the interviewer is working for, production crew, everything. Like, what is she talking about? It's a... It's a it's a remedial and, point. And that's not true because uh, the same way in which artists pay to get on Instagram pages to have their music promoted, they'll pay to sit down on camera just to be seen, say like with a Vlad. Like I always wanted to get a Vlad interview. Vlad's like, all right, cut me the check for X amount of money. Bet. Here's that money. You don't just, you're paid to get on the platform. You don't own the content. You just wanted to be seen no, in front of this other guy. To, no, but see, that's different. That's me paying the Vlad's like whatever his price is to get on his platform. That's not me paying the engineer, paying for the engineer and paying for the studio time, which is what Russ is referring to. Paying for the engineer, paying for the studio time, paying for it to be edited. That's what he's referring to. At that point, Russ owns the content. The content creator or the journalist does not own the content. So, all right. So where do we draw the line? Let's say there is no relationship or currency exchange happening whatsoever. And an artist comes here and says there's one particular thing they don't want to talk about, but everything else is on the table. We have an incredible two-hour interview. We get to so much stuff. But because we're respectful people, we just leave that one topic over here. That's is that now a different. compromised interview? No, it's not a compromised interview. and that, It's not a compromised interview unless that there's something, there's a morality clause in that. Are you asking because they have a rape case? Oh, you're not asking they have a rape case open and you're not asking them about that. Or they're accused of beating a woman and you don't want to ask them about that. That's different. But if you if they don't want to talk about their relationship, then that's I was, something I was more different. getting at, at that yeah, than rape but, but or that's beating what I, women. But, but that's what I'm saying. As far as an interview being compromising, if that's their personal business that isn't owed to the public, that's different. But some answers that are owed to the public that you're not going to ask, even though the public is expecting you to ask those questions, again, that's something different. I just, me personally, I don't agree with the way that she came at Russ, but her response to that, I understand her point. That's all I was saying. I understand her point in saying, if you are, if you are creating an interview, then it's not journalism. That's not an objective interview. That's all I was saying. And I think that's a, a very remedial point yeah, I don't, to the yeah, I don't overall think that's, yeah. scope of, of just because what you're journalism not, is. Just because somebody's paying for the interview, i.e., <clears throat> you know, the equipment, editing, things like that, I don't think that that doesn't mean that it can't be objective. It can be. I mean, if you go but, in and say, nah, don't ask me about this, then it's like, okay, I mean, so I, some journalists just won't do it. They're like, all right, well, if we can't talk about that, I, me sitting here talking to you is like, people are going to be, if, if, if an artist has something major going on, and they cho they're choosing not to talk about it publicly. Journalists probably wouldn't take the interview because it's like, well, if we can't talk about the thing mm -hmm. and what's happening right now, what's the point of us sitting here talking about whatever else you got going on? Like that would just, the journalist now looks like they, he or she didn't do a good job because it's like you didn't ask about obviously what everyone is going to run to the interview to hear about. And um, I had an off the record conversation because I accused Elliot Wilson of doing that with his Drake interview with BDOT. Because that ended up on OVO's YouTube page. It was directed by Theo, Drake's man. So I said to him, I was like, he definitely did the questions. He definitely edited out some shit. He said, no, Drake is just in the business of owning his content. Mm -hmm. Like a smart artist should, similar to what Russ is saying. Mm -hmm. He wanted to shoot it and own the content. Didn't cut one fucking question out of that shit. Mm -hmm. Didn't say there's nothing we can't talk about. It was a objective interview. Yeah. Didn't cut anything out. So to me, where's the problem? Right. If Drake chopped down a whole bunch of shit that Elliot and BDOT asked, at that point, yeah. But now, now we're getting into spooky waters of artists are owning the content, 
The journalists can't ask certain things. If they ask they're them, the artist is going to cut it out. And they're manipulating the content. But exactly. You, you bring that up, but he was interviewing with Elliot and Elliot, who is respected in the journalistic space, especially when it comes to hip hop. the journalists, yeah. The, but we had a whole episode, well, no, not a whole episode, but we had an episode where we came on here talking about when he also owned the content with that white girl that went viral and that interview was now missing from the internet. Do we remember that? We had that conversation? No, what, what white girl? What white girl? Damn, Bobby. Remember that? How we all talked about how that oh, interview was now Drake... missing from the interview because he took it down? But he didn't... That wasn't on Drake's Vivo page. That was on her. Yeah, YouTube that was page. on her thing. Wasn't I it still a... don't know what happened with that. Wasn't it a music thing? Wasn't like a song play? Was it a Tiger song or something? I think that was like the rumor, but I don't... I, think that was I can't the... see Universal yeah. doing that. I think that was the public <laughs> cover. That probably boosted Tiger's streams. Diamond. I mean, he may have, he may have, you know, it may have been the thing um, where he told them that there was only the interview was only allowed to be up for a certain amount of time. I was yeah. going to say it could have also just been a yeah, to, yeah a clause on because yeah. it exists on YouTube, just not on her page. And I'm saying the difference is this was on Bobby's page originally. Yes. She paid for it. The well, uh, they shot. Remember, they shot this at Drake's house. Yeah, they, this is uh, on his home no i know it's at his house but like when he did the um caleb interview that's owned by barstool like even though it's at drake's house it's still owned by barstool mm -hmm. i'm saying the difference with the rap radar one was it's on drake's youtube page shot by his director and edited by his director and he didn't cut anything out but drake was seeing the change as other artists were and wanted to own his own content if i'm doing an interview and i'm this big I'm owning that fucking interview. Crazy? For sure. But there was nothing that they weren't allowed to talk about. That could be different now. I'm just talking about that example. But we've also discussed Russ's fourth point. It's not the journalist's fault. No one cares about journalism anymore. Yeah. Artists are running, and this is not a shot at Kai or any of the streamers. All the artists are going there for promo. Mm -hmm. Because the fans aren't looking for deep dives. Some of us are, but it's a very minuscule part of the fan base. Everyone want to see them dance in Kai's basement. They so she's misguided in her, her anger. Her anger should be that fans don't care about journalism anymore. It's not the artist's fault. If an artist is trying to sell music, they're supposed to care about journalistic integrity or they're supposed to care about promoting their album. Fans don't want this in-depth in sit-down print interview with Elliot Wilson right now. They want to go, they want to see their favorite artist dance with Kai. Yeah. Go do a Drewski sketch. <laughs> Literally Offset like, having a sleepover at yes. Kai's did more for his career than like doing an interview run. And I think it's great. I think that content is amazing. It humanizes the artist. I think it's really cool. I've always asked for balance. I would like that plus a really in-depth musical interview. Mm -hmm. But if I'm an artist and only have so much time and money to go promote my album, I'm going to go after the thing that gets the most eyes and people care the most about. And it's not journalism. So she's not mad at Russ. She's mad at the people that care about her, her occupation. Nobody gives a fuck about that. And that's really what Russ is saying in all four of these points. I think that's why her response is misguided. I think another thing that people don't talk about enough when they talk about artists or celebrities doing interviews with journalists, I think that it's just smarter for sometimes these journalists, you know, to have a certain type of relationship with the person that they're talking with. Like, I think it's awkward to just sit in front of somebody and you don't, this is your first time meeting them. Like, you know, nothing about this person. And then you expect to have an in-depth conversation on camera, on mic. It's like, why would happens. the artist give you that? They don't even really have a rapport with you yet. You think you think Gail and R. Kelly should have kicked it for like a week? I mean, <laughs> I don't, I know what she was going there to get and she got it. You know, she, she, that was a home Did run. Did she for, get it? Oh, that was a home she run for her. That. You know what I'm saying? That was a, she got what she wanted. <laughs> Killing me. That was some fucking journalism. <laughs> yeah, like I and think she anybody. She was just in there, Robert. Any, anybody could have got Robbie, that Robbie, calm of, the fuck down. Yeah, like anybody could have got that type of response from him. He was just under a different type of pressure at that time. You could put anybody. That was a pressure. Cook. Bobby Altoff would have got that response out of fucking. That would be crazy. That was just gonna happen. She'd been like, can you pay my bills then? Yeah, like, it was, it was just that time. But I do think that sometimes artists shy away from doing these interviews because it's, kind of, it's like they really don't know the person. It's like, what are we really gonna sit here? Like, I'm not gonna open up to this person like that. I don't know them. Well, some, I feel like some fans, myself included, don't always want, that interview is great, don't get me wrong. Back to Elliot and Drake. They had a, a relationship at that time and I think they had a great in-depth interview. Most of my questions were answered thought that was cool because they had a relationship. He opened up. 
sometimes I want the cold interview. Yeah. There's no relationship. Here is the question. I do not care about your feelings. I'm not saying all the way old Charlemagne where he would say shit to like really just be mean and belittle someone, which is an art in itself, not discrediting it. I laugh too. But someone that's just going to straight up some Chris Wallace shit. This is my question. I'm not going to let you get off this question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with your answer. I'm not going to give in. We're not friends. I don't care about us after this. Mm -hmm. I think that type of respectful interview is still needed too. I mean, if you're if if you're good at what you're doing, you know how to ask the question without asking it as well too. I mean, that's, where, again, that's where Gail got Kells. Well, I mean, <laughs> exactly. You just have to know what you're doing. But I can understand how some artists uh, shy away from it because it's, you know, a lot of people just want to ask you questions just for clicks and shit like that and try to get some shit to go viral. But it's like, I don't really know you like that. So why would I sit here and have this intimate, in-depth conversation with you? And that, and that is where the press run kind of fucked everything up. And that's just a, a result of the internet and needing so much content. Like artists will stop and go to 22 different outlets when they're in New York, another 22 in LA. Mm -hmm. They talk to everyone. So you never even really get a moment to have an in-depth interview or even one of those one-on-one -on -one cold interviews. Yeah. They're just on to the next shit. Yeah. They're answering the same question. Bigger artists back in the day, you went to what, one magazine, <laughs> one video, mm -hmm. one TRL or 106, and, and, and you'd, get, you'd get your one magazine six pages right and that would be the in-depth one yeah you go to 106 and park get some laughs off have fun and move on mm -hmm. now it's just a bunch of quick hit bullshit like, yeah we have 15 minutes with you mm -hmm. and then we have another same interview 10 other people in the two, the, two blocks the, down the way the big <laughs> artists are still doing that though like i and if you are a big enough artist you can make people read i sat there and read a whole beyonce beyonce just did an interview i can't remember i don't know who it was with but she did a whole interview where she talked about her album. She talked about where she is in her 40s right now. She talked about the kids. She talked about her work. The crazy shit is she did it over email because she's Beyonce and I'm busy yeah. and I'm not going to sit down with you. But people read it. It was going viral on um, TikTok and I mean, not TikTok, um, Twitter. And I feel like if you have the talent in the pool, you can make people do that. If, uh, if but Beyonce is the example. G GQ. It was an email. It was a, a GQ, yeah. This is a hilarious title. An email interview with GQ. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like Drake could do that as well. I think that because of what Drake's personality is, he might not want to. He would get killed for that. Beyonce is different in that regard. Like, there's not so much controversy just circling around her. If Drake did a GQ email... Well, not the email, but just a get, GQ interview period. Something that you mm. have to read. You think he would get smoked for doing a, a paper interview? I yeah. don't think so. Everyone I mean, would accuse him of having on, someone else type it and like... It depends on... It'd be safe. When and how it comes out. Can't catch him in the middle of a conversation. Like, Well, I feel like right now... I've, it's, it's, I feel like the beef is a weird time. We're in, a, sure. we're in a very weird time right now. But outside of the beef, before the beef, I feel like he could have done that. I That's feel why like I he laughed when Benner said, uh, when you guys are in Toronto this week, Maul should hit Drake to see if he'd do an interview. That's it. Drake is not doing an interview. Man, was... <laughs> no worry, mouse. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over five million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, on Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Prize picks is the best way to get action on sports in most states, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Prize picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect, which is great for Mimo. Mm -hmm. You can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Well, speaking of picks hitting, Deshaun Watson has been killing me. I'm taking him in the under every weekend from now on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take... The Monday night football game this week, Rory? Yeah. I'm taking Josh Allen in the over against the Jets. Uh, same. And I think I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to have him in the under. Okay. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Rory Mall and get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code Rory Mall on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Mall, sometimes intimate moments can happen spontaneously. Mm. Unfortunately, I've talked about this moment on the podcast. I was on the road with the track team in college. Mm -hmm. Had two girls in the bathroom and I got a little too nervous. Yeah. And I just wasn't ready. Yeah, got to get that blood flowing. It still makes my stomach hurt yeah. even thinking about that moment. Where was hymns when I needed it? 
They could have given me the treatment where I could have stayed hard and I would have lasted longer. Rory, nothing is worse than not being able to perform when it's time to. Mm. Whether you're busy, you got a lot of stress in your life going on. Luckily, Hims get you in the game. True, but thank God Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints and Viagra and Cialis and their generics for up to 95% cheaper. Maul, I'm sure you're wondering how. You just have to answer a series of questions on their site, and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option. If prescribed, your medication ships directly to you in very discreet packaging for free. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash Rory Mall. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash Rory Mall for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash Rory Mall. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Well, Maul mentioned earlier, and I I think this is a a good segue, the whole thing with journalists becoming friends with the artists and then creating relationships and having, you know, not only does that relationship end with them being friends with the artist, but it also can go into the artist making money from uh, the journalists making money from these artists, whether they, you know, are hosting something at a festival that they're hosting or, you know, hosting this pop up thing or conducting interviews on behalf of this artist because I'm friends with them. Uh, and I'm speaking more directly to Wayno. He had a clip going around about him kind of exposing some information that he, you know, experience he had at Dreamville Fest, where he was basically saying Dreamville artists were saying Kendrick ain't even like that. He's overrated and bashing Kendrick, but he's, you know, sharing thoughts and conversations with people that are involved with the festival that he was doing an activation with and just kind of exposing stuff that wasn't, you know, meant or supposed to be said allegedly. on a platform. <coughs> allegedly, by the yeah. way. This is well, also you know, Wayno said that people at Dreamville was telling Cole that Kendrick ain't all that. Yeah, I'll play the clip. I didn't need a lot of Wayno to say that. You know I mean? we <laughs> we, of course we know that. That's his crew. But y'all Dreamville niggas, man, y'all gas Cole up. Because listen, I was having sideline conversations with a lot of the homies. And a lot of my Dreamville homies was basically saying that Kendrick was, you know, that he's overrated. And that, um, what has he done? And I'm like, yo, are y'all serious? So all this camaraderie that y'all made it seem like with the TDE and, and, and Dreamville and how they was locked in and this, that, and the third, this is all fake? I have so many things to say about that. And it's not even in defense to Cole. It's, ju- it's objective journalism. No, that's not objective journalism because you not chilling with my Dreamville homies and saying that it's objective journalism. That's number one. I think it was, it was okay. Number two, who do you, when you're saying that and you have a, you're on a platform and you know everything that's going on, when you say Dreamville homies, what do you mean by that? Are you talking about Ari Lennox? Are you talking about Julian? Who the fuck are you talking about when you say Dreamville homies? And when that name is said, most people automatically think Assume of Cole. That Cole. So it just kind of sounds like you're putting words in Cole's mouth. You're not, if you're going to say something like this, which I don't agree with ever, but if you're going to and you feel bold enough to say something like this, then be specific. Don't throw the whole crew or like the whole operation under the bus. Don't allude to half so just, of the truth. So just throw one person. In the well, I'm just saying, if you if you feel like you have, you're emboldened enough to say something like this, which you should never say, I don't think anything like this should say, I have relationships with artists. Why not? A lot of the conversations we have, you say stuff that you've spoken about with Drake that would never touch this microphone. That's a fact. And that's that's how I feel about relationships that I have with artists as well. It's like some things are meant to be personal to the people that you have as friends. Not everything is for the journalist moment, for the click yeah, moment. Yeah, but he didn't make it personal. He didn't put no names on it. But he just said he was at Dreamville. He was having conversations. To me, that's worse. With, that's wor- it is like, worse. Where, where I think it's Not naming a name? Where I think it's unfair, because we know Wayno has done stuff with Amazon for Dreamville Fest, has done interviews for years. And there's that artist village and people just talk shit as friends. And especially at that heightened time, Seven Minute Drill had just came out, mm-hmm. just off Kendrick saying what Kendrick said. Of course, people be hyped up and having passionate rap arguments the way we have them. Our off mic, the conversation sometimes have not even made it over here. If I'm having a conversation with my quote unquote friend during a heightened time, Six months later, you're getting on the mic and say we all discredited Kendrick. 
You guys were never friends with TDE? That was some weird fake shit that y'all had? That's, well, no, that's he, odd to me. He's questioning if that was, if that relationship. No, he's was saying fake. straight that, didn't he just say straight? No, he's yeah. he's questioning. He was like, yo, so that was fake? Like, y'all don't He's really saying the relation, he's saying the, the public relationship of the Dreamville TDE being good together was fake based on what he's saying he was told at Dreamville Fest by people in Dreamville. Okay, but he's not, again, you you saying that it would have been better to name names. I'm saying there's no way that would have been better to name but names. But my point is, I don't think there's this should be said people. ever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't agree. think this should be said ever. But instead of, if you feel that confident to say something that you know was never supposed to be repeated in public, then don't throw it on the whole operation. Don't throw the whole label so under the bus. So name the one person that's... Yeah, if you feel like you can confidently the say this, then name the person you're talking about. That's if, crazy. If there's, if there's 25 people in Dreamville, Let's say 10 of them, I'm not even saying artists, 10 that are like notable within the music industry that pe people actually know their names. And you say the Dreamville homies, and you were talking to two people in the corner that were drunk at Dreamville Fest and was like, man, fuck Kendrick. Cole riding, like seven minute drill came out. Fuck Kendrick. Yeah, but why? How why are you getting on a mic six months later saying, yo, Dream why? Dreamville was saying that Kendrick never even did shit. But why, are like, you, but why are you going straight to some two random Dreamville? You dude? think he was sitting with, it was a, a, a convention of just the whole Dreamville think, set right there? You think it was I think, think, I think, I think, I think, I think Wayno knows the same people you know at Dreamville. For sure. And has a relationship with the same people you do at Dreamville. I agree. So I think that's exactly who he's talking about. I don't think he's talking about some random Dreamville fest goer that was just standing in the corner talking about Kendrick and TDE. But he's not going to name the names, like I think naming the names is crazy, but he's saying that he was there, he was having a conversation with the Dreamville crew, and now he's saying, "Yo, y'all gassed him. Y'all was saying Kendrick ain't all of that. He's overrated." Which is, I could definitely. That's what crews do in, in the battle. Yo, homie, yo, no. he trash. We go at that. And that's what the real do. crew will give you the the realistic of what's going on. Because even though I like Seven Minute Drill, calling K dot shit, doing that Jay Z scheme, like, "Oh, your second one was mid, this and that." I think that was bad information to give to your friend, if that's what Wayno's saying here. To gas up to I'm say not, Kendrick never did shit. I'm not even going. I'm that's not like, even, I'm that's not like even. when the OVO team gassed up Drake to say that Kendrick was molested when he clearly didn't say that in the song. I'm not even going that route, what you're saying. I'm speaking okay. more to you saying that you making it, you're alluding it to it like Wayno was just talking to some random person at Dreamville that's not even connected to Cole in any way. No, I think yeah. anyone in the Dreamville crew that I'm talking about is connected. Okay, so I'm not talking about a fan. But Dreamville is huge. But the thing is, Dreamville is huge. It's so a big it's, crew. It's a big crew. So it's like when you say Dreamville, people automatically assume Cole. He knew that when he said this, or if he was thinking at all, that people would associate that with like Cole and like his closest homies. When it could have been the nigga that they like signed and like shelved. Like it could have been anybody. You're not being specific enough. So I think what Julian was saying is either don't say this because this is just bad and Which a bad look. I think the best option was never to say this. <laughs> you at don't all. repeat things. Why like not? That. Because Ma come on, man. We we've said stuff. What is wrong with saying, yo, 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 your crew gassed you and 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 downplayed Kendrick. But and I was looking at y'all like, yo, y'all serious? Like, what are y'all talking about? Put it this What's way. What's wrong with no, saying No, because here's the other thing, he too. He was not... saying they was backstage saying Kendrick had not done anything. Right. And he's saying like, he and he said like, yo, what are y'all talking about? Why would y'all say that? Why Clearly they didn't that? gas Cole because he went on stage and said the complete opposite. Kendrick, you're the fucking greatest. I bow out. So they didn't gas him at all. They're talking about private conversations backstage. Right. Nobody right. gassed Cole. Cole did the opposite if somebody gassed him. Right. But what I'm saying is... If they gassed him, he would have went on stage and said, fuck Kendrick Lamar. We know that Wayno has that access, which means anybody that's close to Cole could have said that. And Wayno not naming no names to me says, I'm not going to put homie's name out there like that. This ain't no rando that he's talking about. This is somebody directly affiliated in close proximity to... The artist that we're talking about. But you don't about. see the problem with someone that at would uh, for sure would, would call Wayno not only, you know, a colleague, but a friend, telling him that information in confidence, and then for him to turn around and say it into a microphone and project it onto a platform. Yeah, cool. And now yeah. everybody's sitting around but talking the, about the, it. Trying but, to but the important part about that is... Like, I'm not go, saying what Wayno's saying is a lie. I'm not saying you saying But that. I don't think it should I'm ever not, have been repeated. I'm not saying you're saying that. And cool, you, that, you, you're entitled to that. What I'm saying is you then said... Or say a name. And I'm like, that's absolutely well, because crazy when you, you did that. Maul, if someone says, oh, uh, if, the if, new if, if, if I, yeah, exactly. Like if I have, if we have beef with someone in podcasting, individual, uh, irrespective of everyone in the room, if I say, you know, it's, it's fuck uh, so-and-so, 
And then someone hears that and says the Rory and Maul crew really fucking they're they're capping because I saw Rory at the show with Homeboy last week, but then I heard the crew like they were shitting on him. Then it's like you're speaking on behalf of a crew. Each of us have individual relationships with everybody in this media space in the game. Our my relationship with an artist could be drastically different than your relationship with the artist, even though we both know them. Mm -hmm. So my point is, don't speak, don't group speak, don't say something that represents everybody that could be involved with that with the with the Dreamville team, especially with a crew that big. Espe but yeah, did, especially with a, but a crew but that large. But, but, but what did Wayno say that was so bad that you like, yo, you shouldn't have repeated that? We're in the heat. Of, what the fuck? What are y'all? Ke see, and I'm and ho ho ho, and I'm and I'm not yelling because I don't want nobody to think I'm mad at no artist. I'm not mad at nothing. Truth be told, I don't care about enough of this shit to be mad at anybody. Mm. I'm just trying to get y'all thought process on how is what Wayno said an issue? Because let Dreamville speak about it. If Dreamville let, let, really, let really Dreamville speak, like them niggas don't want to speak about no, nothing. Saying, Colt, That's Colt, not true. They talk on Twitter. Just put the record out. And, Eve yeah, replied and, to it. Eve replied to it. <laughs> what was Eve's reply? He's, uh, something clout chasing. <laughs> something like that. He said doing something about it. First of all, I don't think Wayno is clout chasing, and, and Wayno's a friend of the show. Um, yeah, thirsty for clicks. And I'm also with you. I don't care that much, but <laughs> what I you think mean? so. He's a Wayno is an example. I think the conversation overall, we're never talking about a specific person, but overall, it's just like, okay, there, like he said, there's first of all, the reason why he said don't name names, like you just used the new Rory and Maul example, you're putting other people in the mix when like J. Cole is the head of Dreamville, right? We're all important on this podcast, but when it comes to this podcast and the crew, y'all are the figureheads for this. So anything that we do when it comes to y'all that anybody says, oh, the new Rory and Maul clue, crew reflects on y'all. So it might not even be a point of view that y'all agree with. You might not even be aware even... of what's even happening. There's been times Julian has posted stuff and the entire internet said I sent him out to post that and we hadn't even spoken in days. <laughs> That's, that so, is and, a fact. I get like... And I'm sitting there like I never even... What the fuck? People are like, damn Rory Maul sent you on a dummy mission. I'm like, I don't even... Also, what I'm saying has nothing to do with our show. <laughs> I'm just like posting or tweeting something and they think everything I say is a fucking sub. Okay, so alright. So, because we going into some whole other shit and I'm just trying to... My ADHD mm. is kicking in. It's cool. so, what I'm, so what I'm trying to ask you is, what is the issue you had with what Wayno okay. said exactly. I, I will answer directly. And let me not say issue because I honestly don't care. And again, Wayno's hey, friend of the show. My problem with it was the angle as if they were bad. For, I thought those were y'all friends. Because Cole already said on that record on 7 Minute Drill before the conversation backstage that his catalog wasn't all that and that he was overrated. We already knew that the Dreamville camp felt that way according to Cole. Don't come back here and say they're saying shady shit and they're bad friends. I thought TDE was your friends. Damn, why are you even speaking that way? Now you're making it seem like every business dealing or, or conversation they've had with Punch, with everyone over there, has been some fake situation because you happen to talk to, to two people backstage at a concert. You're erasing 15 years of friendship. Yeah. I just, I, okay, so I think I, I think what I'm seeing, I'm just, I'm just concerned that why y'all keep trying to to make it seem like uh, Wayno just heard this from some random dude at Dreamville Fest. We're not saying well, I don't think I'm anyone in the never know. crew is random, but like not directly, not directly Cole, Ebe, or the higher ups in that regard that actually have a real relationship with TDE where you could say to them, yo, I thought TDE was y'all friends. Because I think Ebe right now today would say, yeah, TDE is still my friends. And TDE, and that's another thing too. And no, I was not talking Wait. about them behind their back. When it comes to this whole crew thing, crews are all different and they all feel different ways. We all feel differently about different people. I'm sure there's all people in TDE that feel differently about different Dreamville people. Yeah. Like, it's not just like, it's weird, it's TDE and we're beefing with Dreamville. It's people who have their own interpersonal relationships. This person, this rapper might be cool with this singer or this, this. They're all individual people. So you can say, oh yeah, the crew is going at each other or my Dreamville homies, but they might not share the same sentiments as other people in their crew about certain people. Like it's just too many players involved for you to sit up here and say, oh, they're beefing with TDE. They're being fake to TDE. Who do you mean by TDE? Do you mean Kendrick? Do you mean SZA? Do you, who do you mean by that? And also, I forgot the engineer's name. Forgive me, and I'm not discrediting him. Remember when the entire thing happened, when they were airing out us, a bunch of people that were talking after Cole went on stage and said he was bowing out, and we all replied. All the headlines based off that engineer's tweet, that engineer's for Dreamville, 
when he was saying, fuck all y'all, all these artists, we put y'all on and now you talking shit about us. The pool is closed. All that shit. Kid took a shit in the pool. All, all of the headlines That's was nasty. Dreamville shits on industry and Dreamville says, we can't work with y'all no more. It was one engineer that works with Dreamville. They was acting like even Cole said it. <laughs> so do you see the point at all? And no. I want you guys... <laughs> okay. That's cool. Yeah, we, no. cool. Yeah. We don't have we're, yeah, we're taking this too far <laughs> that it needs to be. It's I just, fine. I really don't I think, give a fuck. I think, I think shout out to Wayno. Shout out to E. I Cole, think what everyone. Wayno said was fine. I don't think it was okay. anything wrong with what he said. I, I, I think wanting him to put a name to it or not say anything is crazy. Putting a name to that would have been wild. But you can, but you can see why... Though to the examples that we we no, make, I know exactly you're, you're what Wayno was on behalf doing. of nearly fifty people. Yeah, but I know again, Wayno was just saying that that's what was said from the camp. He wasn't putting no names on it, but he just found it awkward because he was like, "I thought those was y'all homies. Like I thought y'all fucked with them. Like and y'all back here, it sounds the tune sounds a little different. And understandably, well, why it's a moment, it's a battle happening. So you know that's part of the the crew, what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to rile each other up and, you know, it's us or nobody, like that type of thing. And I'm not saying Wayno said anything disrespectful or super over the line, but it kind of goes back to your point of journalists should be friends with artists. And I do agree with that to get a good interview, but in the art of, I'm sorry, the times of clicks and gotcha moments, fans don't want to hear a good interview. They want to hear the gotcha shit. So it pays not to be friends with people. Oh, hold on. Wayno's calling me. Okay. My good brother. Ain't nothing, man. First of all, you, you're on the air right now. We're recording, so I don't want you to, I don't want you to, you know what I mean, just jump out there and say some shit you ain't supposed to say. So And if you did, we tell the internet that you said it. So so let me, tell, let me hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something. I never say none I, I ain't supposed to say. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. Hmm. The other way. That's that Harlem talk With right the bottom there. Up. Yeah. The speakers on the bottom. Um ain't nothing. So yo, so quick quickly, your uh your post came up. And you know it made it made some noise out there. You said, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, in response to the, the the latest J Cole effort. Um, mm -hmm. You said that Dreamville affiliates uh, feel like Kendrick Lamar isn't uh, he's he's overrated. He's you know is he's not all that. Um, so we brought it up in the room when we were talking about it, and the consensus in the room was you shouldn't have said what you said because it kind of throws the camp under the bus. To which I said, I didn't see nothing wrong. And then the other feeling was, it would have been, if you're going to say what you said, you should have said who said it, which I thought was absolutely crazy. Where's, where Rory at? I'm right here, Wayno. Rory, what's your, look, can I talk to you? What you? I, I know I ain't got but so much time, but I want to know what you thought. Because you my dog and I respect you. Uh, and vice versa. Damn, you want to know what I thought? <laughs> um, you just told me what you thought, <laughs> <mom>. my, <laughs> So, So my thing with the clip because again i didn't see the entire thing exactly. but you Nobody but you did, but, but you having the angle more or less and to your point now saying it was barbershop talk and y'all was just having fun talk behind the scenes to then say that and angle it as yo i thought y'all was friends with tde puts a different type of sauce on top of it that was my feeling with the entire uh, thing I, like all right I now you're that. making it seem like Yo, we've been bad friends to these guys and we've been talking behind their back the entire time. That was my oh, issue nah, with it. And that's why I said put a name on a bullet because at that point, like, who in Dreamville are you, you talking to? Who's really oh, been so shady get, to TDE? I get, so I get I get what you're saying. I'm get, I get what you're saying from that perspective, right? Like, I do. I, I can understand that. I'm a man, right? So I can understand how now, because I didn't look at it like that, I can understand where you're coming from. My thing was, is like, it's just like if we have in general, if if you if you talking with somebody and they like now nobody said that the, 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 like it's not a general thing about everybody saying thing. This, this is just a conversation I'm having with somebody who I thought I was cool with, mm -hmm. right? And we're having general rap conversation. Niggas debate all the time. Like we debate about rap all the time. That's why we on these cameras because we talk about stuff, right? So I wasn't trying to form it as like oh. 
TD, I mean, Dreamville hates on Kendrick. I'm just saying, like, yo, y'all, y'all saying that one person says, all right, he's overrated. So for me, again, my assumption is maybe you had a conversation with Cole one time and maybe he 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 might have you might have gotten to his ear. That was the whole the whole thing I took was this, because you said you didn't see the whole thing. I said, yo, J. Cole, don't let people bully you into um, what's the name? Into to making a decision. So then I get all of this. J. Cole don't have the like the young thug meme. He don't have internet. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So so it's like now all these people is making it seem like I I like I'm a part of um Dreamville in some sort of way, and I like spread these secrets. Like that's not the case at all. This is just general conversation. That if you man enough, nigga, I don't have to say you said it. Say it yourself. If you if you're not scared, you feel me. But now, well, I'm not everyone's that. a media person that has a platform yeah. where they just spew opinions. Some people are behind the scenes and happen to be in an artist village and just say some shit to people that I think are friends. Man, Wayno, where you was at when you heard that? Because these niggas saying you was at the fucking bathroom and heard a uh, a nigga with a GA wristband say that shit. No, no. So look again, I, I get. I think it's two things. I think on one side, it's like. What it seems and what my intent was. My what my intent was to just give context unto unto what people say about the battle, right? When it came to J. Cole, I thought that he shouldn't have said nothing. That's the whole point I made. I thought he shouldn't have said nothing. And my assessment was like, bro, don't let your homies gas you up because niggas think that he's trash. You know what I'm saying? Now, if nobody said that to him and you came up with these bars about how your first shit was classic, your second shit was tragic, then that's fine. But then don't take that back after you said it because that's why I gave the analogy. If you step on my foot and you made a mistake and you say sorry, that still don't mean that it didn't hurt. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So my intent, my my intent wasn't to like stir up some shit. My intent was just to be honest in, in, a, about my approach and say, yo, like I had like arguments with niggas regarding these battles, I'm thinking that Kendrick is going to do his thing. Other people don't. And that's 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 the thing that I was trying to get across. It, it came across the wrong way to an extent. But ultimately, I ain't taking what I said back. You feel me? Like, I'm not. Mm, oh, I respect that. You ain't signed to Dreamville. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and again, I mean, we, we agree with you on that front. Our conversation more was being in these artist villages and being around these artists and their team. I ain't in nobody so, village, man. Stop that. That's the man. name of the, that's the name of what it's called, Wayno. Wayno. It's called the artist village. I didn't you name were the doing village. Interviews in the village, bro. That's what you were posting. <laughs> like, I'm not like, saying you part of their team. I'm saying th that's what it's called. And I'm saying some of the conversations that we have, especially at the height of that beef, like you brought up before, barbershop talk. Some of that is not meant to go out because people's emotions were heightened and the crew is so big. That could now be put on Cole or Eve or someone else. Like, it could have just been a casual combo. Thing. I, it, it don't like it, end of the day, bro. It's like end of the day, bro. Like I, I look at it from this perspective. I understand every standpoint, every every point that you're making, right? Like I understand every point that you're making. Ultimately, bro, if I said something that ruffles some feathers, stop being a bird. Right. <laughs> like, I like it. Mm. Well, <laughs> Wayno, we respect and love you. Thank you for calling in, um, and hope to see you soon. I love y'all brothers too, man. Keep doing y'all thing. All right, peace, bro. Peace. Well, shout out again uh, to Wayno, man. Um, staying on music, I listened to the Glorilla album over the weekend. I don't know if anyone else heard it. It's been a very pro Glorilla podcast, but Glorious is great. How is it? You like it? It's a it's a great gym album for men because you know how we always have that debate. Like some of this music isn't for us. That shit. I'm sorry, Merzik. How do you say it? Merzik. Merzik. So there's so many added R's to this album that I didn't know needed R's, but mm -hmm. she hard R'd everything. A lot of hard R's, yeah. A lot of hard R's. <laughs> um, you gotta stay away from that. I know, but this is where I can add hard R's because she doesn't put it on the N-word. Mm. She puts R's in every word that doesn't need an R. Got you. I didn't even know there's an R in music. Mm -hmm. Any, anything <laughs> with a U in it, she puts an R in Merzik. Um, It's great, though. I, beat selection, perfect for the gym. Lotto made me clutch my pearls. What did she say? She said in her verse... I'm gonna show you where to shoot. I wanna lick the gooch. I was in the gym like, huh. Mm -mm -mm. Damn, you almost fell off the treadmill? <laughs> mm. I'm I'm so used to Lotto just saying like, he ate my pussy and I left. I didn't know she was like returning the favor mm -hmm. and returning it like that. She, she seems like a very given person. She says, I'll show you where to shoot. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna lick the gooch after mm. I nut. Ooh. After the nut. <laughs> oh, I know. That's follow through. Mm. I know <laughs> somebody don't play about Lotto. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, God. Um, that album with her and T Pain sound. I'm interested in it's that. Pretty one. It's pretty good. good. There's controversy going on because it was originally the record was originally for Erica Banks. I think they gave it to, and they snatched it from her, gave it to Glorilla. But I mean, duh. 
<laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I don't know the politics of that. All I know is Glow got off on that. Yeah. No, it's actually, this is for men too, this project. I like Glorilla. Every time I hear her, every time I see an interview with her, her personality, she seems like a really cool person. So I like, I like Glorilla. I like how Glow has her, her thing, like her shtick has kind of become and stayed like, uplifting music most of her singles and everything is like really like uplifting like you that bitch affirmations like that type of music and not in a corny way and i really like i, I appreciate that and I also like i really like the song with her and money long where it's basically about that nigga it's the chorus is that nigga don't deserve my friend like he don't know what to do with a bad bitch i always advocate for my bitches leaving their ain't shit niggas so her making a whole song about that love it yeah she smoked that hook too is she holding women accountable though I mean, it's not that song. It's not. It's the song is about <laughs> you getting beated on and cheated on. So no, she's not holding. Oh, she's yeah. Like, it's yeah. it's uh, it's yeah. Eve Love Is Blind Part Two yeah. in a different way. Okay, DV. Yeah, got you. Um, but no, it's it's great, and I I will say she's a good example of artist development that we haven't seen in like a really long time. Mm -hmm. From what Glorilla was in the beginning to now, you could actually see the artist development mm -hmm. and like what they worked on, what she worked on. I. We rarely see that anymore. It's like, oh, you have YouTube streams? Here's a record deal and we throw you out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like they were, we watched her have a failed single. We watched her come back from that. Like she's had two or three great singles from this. I've enjoyed watching her journey. That's all I'm really getting at. But, and like I've said before, I personally think that Glorilla, when it comes to the women um, and just the party scene, I think Glorilla owned the summer with her songs because that, fucking uh it's 7 p.m friday it's 95 degree that mm -hmm. was like in every party you had to hear that song so i wasn't even mad at the her and sexy red doing the wipe me down flip mm -hmm. Ooh, i usually fun. hate flips and wipe me down is sacred to the noops so you know i'd be very critical i'd, I'd like to flip mm -hmm. i think they did it well so and shout out to gloria hallelujah <laughs> glorilla glow yeah glow um do we have voicemails though you've got mail we do. Uh, I have a fun one to start with. Here we go. Ready? Hey, Rory, Maul, Damaris, and Julius. All right. I said Julius. I'm fucking weak. Julian. Oh, my God. <laughs> Orange Julius. I'm um, sorry. I needed some advice. Um, by the way, this is anonymous, but I am... A married mother of one. Oh, she cheating. And I love my husband. Oh, she definitely to cheating. the death of me. But I also am still secretly in love with my ex. Sis, it's my bag. Right. <laughs> yeah, glow. Um, to keep it brief, my ex and I, we were in a relationship for maybe three-ish years on and off. Um, but I was also interacting with my current husband um, for that same duration of time. And then we ended up um, locking in, getting married, and having a baby. Um, so I've been. You mean your ex didn't want you juggling and you postpartum and new wifehood? But I also still just have those thoughts um, of my ex. And of course, I mean, if I could turn it off, I would. But. Here we are. So give me some advice. Also, Damaris, I love you so much. You're beautiful. You look like you smell good. Rory, if I. What that mean? Oh, it just, it got cut. I don't think she understood there was a time limit, but that was just a really awkward spot. <laughs> I'm at the edge. Now I'm not going to sleep tonight. Now yeah. I need to know what, it, if what? I'm crying. If she were to also cheat, it'd be with me. I don't think that was oh, what okay. she was going to say. That's what I thought she was going to yeah, say. No, I didn't think that. What's the deal? Is the grass greener or how should she handle this? I think it's the complete opposite. In your postpartum, it's shitty and you're a new wife and you had some fun with your ex, but there's no real structure there. Clearly, he didn't want to be with you and you settled for your husband and you have a beautiful life because of it. Going back to some unstable, fun bullshit, it, the grass is not greener. It's going to stress you out even more. Mm. I think that she, um, well, first of all, salute to her for admitting that she's still in love with her ex. Yeah. A lot of people up. have a hard time even admitting that part. Um, a few questions, though. Like, what was it that drew her more to the current husband? He than was... 
probably the only one that wanted to actually have a relationship. And so she sounds like he probably was the only one that was treating her good. Yeah. And we all know how that can go sometimes in relationship. Women come from a lot of toxic relationships. And then when they get a good, healthy relationship, it's not quote unquote exciting, fun. Um, they're bored or whatever. Um let's call a spade a spade. A lot of women don't want to be with a guy that will treat them better. Yeah. They are attracted to the bullshit. People love toxic yeah. toxicity. People love that. People they need that in their lives. But, you know, um, I think again, you know, you got your family, you got too much to lose. You got your family now, you know, y- your baby. Um, it sounds like he's providing a home for his family. Um, didn't give much detail about the situation with the ex. Uh, so I don't know where, where he's at in his life, if you know he's stable or not. But he I didn't mean, want to be with her when she was single without a baby. You think he's gonna swoop in and be like, now let's be together? Yeah. I I'm mean, not saying stay in your your marriage. I'm just if, also if your marriage stinks, why, divorce him, but don't go with your ex. He I'm, didn't no, want to. I'm just trying to figure out why they didn't make it. Because he ain't want her. He ain't want that girl. And well, I, I mean that lovingly because I love you too, but I, I know that situation from a mile away. He didn't want to be with her. He didn't want to be with you her. You don't love her. I don't love you're, her. You're talking like she your ex. She just said she loved are me. You, are you the ex? I love people who show me love and I okay. do love our supporters. I mean, if y'all don't love the people that don't try give y'all money it. for Patreon, Our, that's our supporters y'all. and listeners are smarter than that. That's not what we're saying. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, that's that's the marriage um, bag right there. That gas lit. Yeah. <laughs> she, she keep a gas of butane in her. Oh, mm-hmm. damn. Quick pivot. There was a poll going around on who's the biggest gaslighter on the podcast and you two were going neck and neck. We were not neck and neck. Maul was like 75%. I was 20% and you and Rory shared the other five. you. That's exactly. People don't know what gaslighting is if they think I had I'm zero a, votes. Yeah. If they think I'm a gaslighter, I don't think Maul's a gaslighter. People don't know what gaslighting is. Maul's Demar- a lot of things, but Demar- gaslighter is one hundred percent the biggest gaslight on the show. Do y'all? M- she starts everything you know? with. So what you're saying is no. That's not what that's I'm saying. Not I said what I said. <laughs> that's not gaslighting. Yes, that's, that's exactly good, what it is. Uh, Do you know conversing. what is gaslighting? What is the? De- can you give me a definition of gaslighting? Demaris. Okay. Mm. That was mm. my point. That, that's definitely Thank you for proving my two. point. Gaslighting is a form of psychological abuse where a person causes someone to question their sanity, memories, per- or perception of reality. So what the fuck are we talking about? What are we even talking about? Well, there's example one. <laughs> what are we even talking about? What, that's I, Maul. Every time you say anything to him, what we, the fuck are we talking we about? It. Y'all are fucking insane. Y'all are crazy. You just read that de- yeah, definition. Gaslighting. Y'all, y'all are crazy. You sat here and gave me an excuse why you thought Quavo was hotter than Chris Brown. That made no sense. <laughs> and that's gaslighting because that's not what we said. Wait, what does gaslighting have to do with that what, conversation? What did you not say? That's, that's just, not what we said. That's just a difference of that's opinion. That's not yeah. what we said. What did you say? Don't say what we said. What did you say? What I said was, and first of all, I didn't bring up the point. Rory brought up the point, but I supported him in saying in younger people and a younger yeah, demographic so. at the specific time that we were in talking about a streetwear show that Chris Brown and Mike Meek in the whatever Migo we were talking, Quavo might be on the same level. Chris Brown is not just eating him up. We never talked about talent. Nobody was talking about talent. Nobody was talking about fame. You, Nobody okay, was talking so you, about you them did, being a bigger star. Up, we were didn't, talking didn't about agree. a rule fashion show, that's a okay. hip hop and it's young. Kid. That is exactly that's what, what we were talking about. We were talking that's about. not what y- y'all you said. Y'all, y'all said that Quavo was hotter than Chris Brown in that room in that, for a streetwear exactly, brand in that, that in that one no, little venue. No, he's not. Point. Point. But he's okay, not. Though. Okay, okay no. and you then, can then disagree. In no, and then then no room. And, that's what I'm saying. What y'all saying? That's why it was proven. But don't change what we were saying. We're wrong. We're wrong. We know we're wrong. wrong. But don't okay. change the whole what we were saying. Is wrong. That's not. I know I'm wrong. The entire hey, internet knew you're questioning wrong. me, admit it, like admitting that I'm wrong. So I'm this is, going, I feel I, gaslit. I'm, I'm speaking to the marriage being a bigger gaslighter. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm speaking to you, not understanding what gaslighting means, because you just literally gaslit How? the entire t- room. How did I gaslight like the entire gas room? Here. How? I don't think that conversation had anything to do with gaslighting. Yeah, what is she? That's what, I'm, what are you talking about? Quavo I'm speaking to fact. No, but I'm saying just... the example period of Quavo and Chris Brown. What did that have to do with gaslighting? Yeah. What does gaslighting That's a di- mean? A form of psychological abuse where a person causes someone to question their sanity, memory, or perception of reality. She would that was just was a say, difference of opinion. That's a different. Yeah, it's just a different. You guys opinion. weren't like that. Wasn't a gaslighting. No, that's not. Y'all got to go back and listen to that. And that's why I was sitting here like, yeah, what are y'all, is so when I say, what, what are y'all I said, talking about? what I said. What, so when I say, what are y'all talking about? That's what that is. It's like, are y'all, do y'all hear what y'all saying right now? You're trying to change the perception that's of a, what reality is by saying Quavo's hotter than Chris. No, no nigga on the planet would ever even say that. He keeps gaslighting because that's not what we said. You didn't say Quavo was hotter than Chris Brown? No, it, 
didn't we just explain this five minutes ago? Am I living in a fucking time? I'm asking you. No, you're no, living in reality. That's not what I said. I you're living in reality and you're trying said. to change the reality of what you said. Clips of that's not what we said. We were talking stop about stop saying a we and arena. stop saying what you said. Me, me. Demaris as you get comb. That's not what I said. It's on YouTube. That's, so that's what not it, what I so said. So you didn't say that Chris Brown. You didn't say that Quavo was hotter than Chris Brown. That's not what I said. You didn't say right now in terms of whatever you said that Quavo is a hotter name than Chris Brown. You didn't say that. You keep saying Quavo. Did you say Quavo is bigger than Chris Brown? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said you said Quavo is hotter something. than Chris Brown. In a specific room. And I said in, a specific in no room. room in the world okay. ever and that's, and is listen, Quavo a hotter listen, name than Christopher Brown. What fine. about Thanksgiving that's at fine. his grandmother's house? So what is he talking about? That's like, how, is, how, am I, how is that not what you said? That's exactly what you said. <laughs> that's, and that's okay. my point of you saying you don't gaslight. Because okay. okay. now you're saying that's not even what you said. Okay. And that's exactly what it's you said. It's okay. I've, I've come to realize that nuance is not really your best friend. That's fine. Nuance is not my best nuance, friend? Nuance is not your best friend. Every conversation has nuance to it. You ignore nuance and be like, I well, just you said this everything and black you and said. white things are not black I just repeated everything you said. On that date, whatever date that was in March, April, Quavo was not hotter in any room on the planet than Chris Brown. Okay. And you sat here and broke it down like as far as household name, this, that. You said a bunch of shit that meant nothing. Okay, that's your opinion. I'm not arguing. That's with you a about fact. It. What are you talking about? The okay. entire everybody that heard that clip agreed. Like, what are okay. you talking about? And that's so, your opinion. Should she fuck her ex or what? No, she should definitely fuck her ex. <laughs> stay far, stay far away from. Stay She's far away from that her baby. And, she should definitely fuck her ex. <laughs> stay definitely. far away from that. If you were still single and you still wanted to explore that, then you have every right to. But you signed on that dotted line, and not only did you sign on that dotted line, you put put a child into this world and promised to give it the best life you can. You need to get over it. It's the grass is not greener and you're remembering all the good times and conveniently forgetting the bad. She's gaslighting herself into thinking because she had fun with him for a few times that that would be the better relationship. You never had a real relationship with him or you'd be in one. Stop gaslighting yourself. He's not the one. If you have a fucked up marriage, divorce him and go find someone else. And she didn't even say the marriage was fucked up though. She probably just also it's doesn't feel like if, herself. If she, and respectfully to her, if it's gotten to a point that she called into a podcast for advice, that marriage is not in a great place. But it's not even just the that could she's probably not in a good place. It doesn't that's mean that's the marriage. You can you can be in a bad if place. If somebody's in a bad place in a relationship, the relationship's in a bad place. As someone that's been through bad ones, yes. If one person is not present or around, that relationship is not in a good place. I mean, I'm not disagreeing. Gas, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing. Can I, with you. I found the clip. I was gonna replay it and, I don't, and see. What the was clip it. is awful because it's a minute of a bunch of different <laughs> conversations. It is. How many clips have we put out of you and you be like, "Oh, that's not the full story." Anonymous, <laughs> go fuck your your ex boyfriend. No, no, like, no, 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 no. Should just be so. We're in a simulation. No, go amnesia. do whatever makes you happy. Fuck him. <laughs> fuck your ex boyfriend. <laughs> fuck him. Forget about logic perception. <laughs> Fuck him. That's what I said. I said the same shit you said. You want to start this again, Julian? Go ahead, I play the clip. I kind of want to, yeah, I'm curious. Oh, Let's see how it was cut. So you got to move somebody. Guess what? They moving that person. You think if they told them they have to move Quavo, they'd move Quavo? 100 percent. That's Chris Brown, nigga. At the Rude event, though, and Rude being probably one of the biggest brands within the culture, they kind of have the same social yeah. status. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah. All right, is Chris Brown a bigger name than Quavo? Me. Is he a bigger star than Quavo? In yeah, the that's world? Obvious. Yeah. That's all right, so what are we talking about? But that's not. And first of all, that's cut up. Did it, and now, didn't he just let it play, like, man. Brown, let it play. Nobody want to hear her said, right yes, now. Let it play, obvious? man. Just make it sure. Let it play. Just make it sure. Let it play. That's not what it plays. This is a social event. Okay. Look, this is a social event. This is a fashion show. Like you be on right now, name wise. Quote unquote, hotter. He is? Yes. And that's not a bad thing to say that happens with every artist ever in Based off of what, though? Quavo and the Migos are bigger than Chris Brown when it comes to a name and name recognition different. What? In any room, Chris Brown is the biggest They cut, they literally cut. What does that mean? You think Chris Brown is also cut around my. That rude part, he cut out a lot of. What does. All right, we heard what she said. What does that mean? That yeah. Quavo is a hotter name as far as what? What does that mean? Because <laughs> Quavo and Amigos are not hotter, a bigger name than Chris Brown in any scenario. We know that for a fact. That's not me guessing. That is a fact. Chris Brown is bigger than all of these niggas Nobody's will ever disagreeing be. Disagreeing with you. But we that wasn't the argument. So Nobody's what did she say? She just you. said it. Well, you won't know because it's a one minute clip that was cut and peach cut with the. What fuck did I was you saying? say right great, there? Great way to cut. What it, did by you the way. say right That's there? Like, did numbers. You Thanks, act like our, you act like. What our did you say right there? Literally cut to get okay, people engaged right, so, to argue. So like, how come? Right so how come it's only cut? So how come everything I'm saying in the cut makes sense, but what you said in the cut don't make sense? I don't know. I didn't cut it. Like what the fuck? No, I figured that. That's solid gaslighting. Like that's all I appreciate. No, I was giving you props. <laughs> it's right here. We looking at it. Bro, what are y'all talking just, I about? Literally, I literally. Okay. <laughs> you can't cut and clip what you don't say. Okay. She said it. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Hold on. There's a little bit more. Hold on. Uh, not does, a does there have to be a girl sweet sixteen in Quavo right now? That Chris Brown. No. What that, the fuck are you was talking about? That was Hello, boy, sweet sixteen. No. Niggas don't have sweet sixteen. What is she talking about? Tell me what your boy's that's not sweet sixteen party. party. You're not trying to that's change no, my perception of reality and saying a boy don't sweet sixteen. I do. What boy has a sweet sixteen? That's not changing my perception of reality. Ellie Reed's son. I saw it on. I saw it on MTV. It was on MTV too. <laughs> Yo, y'all look crazy. There was a All lot of boys on that one. This was, was 18, crazy. though. <laughs> I wish I would have went to that my, my mom and said, can I have a sweet 16? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? At a boy sweet 16? Who, what boy has a sweet 16? We, if I remember correctly, we that got brought into the new generation. And we were suggesting that when it came to sweet 16s... Today. That let's, they let's may want to go out towards, of it. Boys birthday, b- yes. birthday parties. <laughs> Or girls too. Yeah, girls too. Yeah, just birthday parties. That they period. may choose Quavo because Man, of the hey, age gap. Rory, shut up! I'm just <laughs> no fucking girl, just, no little girl on this planet is gonna be happier to see Quavo at her birthday party than Chris Brown. I'm never gonna poll what are you them. Talking so about? you win. Exactly. Of course you're not gonna poll it because you know that's you know you know the they reality. They have to get their, their parents' consent. Cut this shit, poll. man! Stop! Stop! Quavo ain't no way. Quavo ain't even the hottest nigga in this group. I'm going hotter than Chris Brown. What are we talking about? I just don't know if 16 year old girls are just running to Chris Brown. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yo, now you don't know if 16 year old girls are running to see Chris Brown. No, I don't know. Rory, stop this. What's up with you? What's up, man? What, I don't know. You can say you was wrong, though. You can just say you was wrong. I did before and you gaslit me and wouldn't let, no, allow I, me to say I, it. I, I'm not letting you. I'm you were mean nothing. to me when I said, I'm yo, say, I'm wrong. I'm saying right now, you're saying that you don't know. If There's little, been about five episodes after that clip that I have said to you, to your face, looked you dead in the eyes and said, I was wrong. And you will never let me just be wrong. Cool. <laughs> Speaking to what you just said, you said you don't you're know. You're acting like Kia right hold now. Hold on. You just said. <laughs> like, I you said just, I was wrong. Hold on. Let it go. So you, you just said, <laughs> you just said, you don't know if little girls will run to a quick round. I don't know anything little girls are doing. <laughs> 16 year old girls. I have no clue. Why, why Still little girls. But I'm crazy though. I don't think you're, I don't think anyone. Gaslighting. Do, you, do y'all see? Do y'all see the point? He's been proving the point for the past 10 minutes. Damn, you Nobody that. said you were crazy. Nobody. I said That's 10 exactly minutes ago said. that I agree with you. You proved us all wrong. Yes, you were right. I said that mad long ago. Yeah, but in but a moment, no, 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 no. in a moment, you was gaslighting. Okay, them. no, I wasn't gaslighting. I had a difference of opinion. People are allowed to have difference yeah, of opinion. That's usually what gaslighting is. is a fact. You change no, that's your, not gaslighting. You're changing the perception of reality by saying that you no, felt like Quavo. No, that's I'm giving my opinion. That's not, but that's not, nah, that's not what you did. You okay. said, right, Even you broke I it down. the conversation. You broke it down. You said, yo, as far as right now, household name. Rory stood on the opinion, but when I supported his opinion with, okay, well, this is how, break it down like this then somehow it's you you were saying this you were saying this when that's not what i said we just saw you say it and i'm not gonna go off of the fact that peach clipped it up like that to get reactions because he's good at his job good job peach yeah but it was my, great it was a great clip but, like, every, but everything in my clip everything that he clipped to me was me being right though oh he is a bias editor oh, okay peach only know does me dirty no. oh, okay i i didn't know that that's what was happening my bad so who's the biggest gas letter like i said let the room decide. Let the people listen and decide. Yeah, yeah. Vote in the comments. Man. Because right now that poll is only on our Discord. <laughs> vote in the YouTube comments. We'll what, see. What was the final poll on Discord? Oh, Mall. it was Maul. I know, but like, what were the percentages? I don't know. I saw that they were doing it. I didn't see the final. Because doesn't it take like 24 hours or People something? thinking yeah, I'm a gaslighter is fucking insane. That's the peak gaslighter answer right there, response. You think I'm a gaslighter? I can see the point, like, with that Damaris is making. What's the point? 68% Maul, 23% me, Rory, uh, 5%, Julian, 5%. He's the, First of all, he might be the biggest gaslight I've ever met in my life. What? In real life. IRL. Definitely. Without a How? doubt. Rory, you what? gaslight a little bit too. And so do what? I. I don't think we fucking with Maul though. But you you gaslight too. You <laughs> she gaslight think, too. She think I'm gaslighting by saying, what are we talking about? That's gaslighting? What are we talking about? If I'm speaking facts? Wait, okay. No. Now I'm wondering how I'm a gaslighter. <laughs> Rory, like, what? fuck all that other shit. Fuck all that happy to be here. You, you, shit that you, want me you literally admitted to being a gaslighter before. Ooh. You I'm gas- gaslighting situations for fun. Absolutely. Okay, I'm not saying you're doing it for like... Rory, you've been oh, in relationships. You, when you, you said in real life, I thought you meant like I'm really out in these streets. Ga- I gaslight no, for fun no, here man. for sure. Yeah. I, that's what I'm, I'm only talking about for here. Oh, I, I completely make up things you say for, for fun. That's what I'm <laughs> That's what I'm speaking to. That's no, exactly that's not what Damaris was saying. No, you've gaslit in relationships before. That's oh yeah, you know, we're humans. Like we all yeah, have I think every man has, has done that before. But like, I'm not like a serial gaslighter. 
I say I didn't put cereal in front of it. See, I never said that. I just said you are the biggest oh, one of the biggest gaslighting. Am I gaslighting right now? Yeah, I don't know. You might be. Depends on what the definition is. What is it again? Read again. It's the uh, gas. And put it into here. a sentence. <laughs> Gaslighting is if you sit up there telling somebody like if somebody if you're cheating and your girlfriend comes to you like I know you're cheating I just can't prove it I know you're cheating it's like you know I'm cheating you're crazy and that's your problem because your mother you didn't stay with your father and now you don't believe real life I've can never work. done that before that's gaslighting that's <laughs> no. a form of gas now make my shoes. I'm a, wait what was that let me write that one down so mother wasn't with father <laughs> I had to use that tonight <laughs> or saying some shit like. I know you you know you don't remember that happened and it's like no I don't remember that happened I'm telling you that happened like it's like no it didn't happen like what Ma just did to me and it got me looking like eh, damn did that happen it's like questioning oh, your no. own in, sanity in real life out of a few relationships I don't I don't feel personally that I'm part of the gaslight community <laughs> the, the more line saying I'm the biggest gaslighter is wow <laughs> Well, yeah. Should I play another one? I don't, like, don't, I don't know how I feel about Julian and I being tied. I, I am, first of all, we can all agree, I'm an awful liar. I can't lie. That's why I suck at gaslighting. But is gaslighting I, all based liar. off lies, though? Yes. Well, not always full You're not telling lies. the truth when you're gaslighting. Full, not always full I lies, guess, yeah. but yeah. It, it's manipulation for sure. Yeah, I can't lie for shit. I'm awful Or manipulate. Yeah, you kind of suck at all. I'm terrible at it. At manipulating, you're great at that. Lying Who the fuck I manipulate? Who? I've seen you manipulate things. Don't do that. Where? You're like Doctor. You're like Doctor Strange when it comes to manipulation. Well, it's like, explain. I mean, I've seen you do certain things where it was like, okay, you manipulated that situation, but it's not nothing crazy. Okay. But you can't say you're not a manipulator, though. You, I've, I've seen you manipulate. Such. Now, ass. I'm not saying that you move through life trying to manipulate rooms and shit like that. No, but if you've done it. All right. So it's like forty-eight laws of power. Machiavelli, like, are those scriptures? Are those gaslighting? Because they don't really necessarily it, tell you to lie, per se. The they just teach you how to embellish, manipulate. Embellish the truth a little. <laughs> well, not all manipulation. Gaslighting is a form of manipulation, but not all manipulation is gaslighting. So there's manipulation, and then gaslighting is one of the umbrellas under Gosh, Gotcha, all right. The subgenre. Yeah. It's like Universal, and then, like, Def Jam. All I know is you saying me being the biggest gaslighter you ever met in your life is hilarious, knowing the people we know. You know Diddy. <laughs> that's, a, that's Spectrum. Yo. <laughs> He's Con Ed. <laughs> you call it Diddy Con Ed is <laughs> Now that I think about He's it. He's the grid. I, I think Puff did gaslight me once. <laughs> No, he was trying to do something else. Once. I'm, not, I'm thinking about it now. Trying to warm you up. Get you he ready. did. Fire and desire. Fleshlight you. you. I felt really good about myself you. after. Trying to fleshlight you. He He's just sick. <laughs> He's Puff to... definitely gaslit me once and I felt good about myself. But we have another voicemail. Let's, let's go there. Oh, you was ready? <laughs> no, not for that. I didn't know he was doing that. But see, I didn't even see the breadcrumbs he was laying. Did you douche? Oh, you didn't see the oil. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Yo, why were they so mean to Bow Wow on Twitter over the weekend? What Bow Wow do? I got Bow Wow's point, but he he need to... Sh say, all right, Say Cheese... I don't know if Say Cheese misquoted him, but Bow Wow was saying... <laughs> say Cheese probably did misquote. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Okay. I don't know if it's fair for Bow Wow, but they had posted something, a, a quote from Bow Wow saying, yo, since like Puff got locked up, all the party's been dead. Like after BET weekend, there was nowhere to go. Like Nah, he didn't say that. <laughs> Puff... Wait, Bow Wow said that? <laughs> Say Cheese posted it, so I don't know. <laughs> Bow Wow said that, like on a mic? But somebody said, he's been so freaked out, he's having withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> don't do that I was like, Bow yo, this man. is fun. Don't do Bow Wow like that, man. Yeah, don't do that, man. Yeah, he did apparently say... Uh... Bro, okay, so he said, bro's supposed to be on a 250-foot yacht with his wife, legs up, chilling. It seems unreal at times. Me and Jermaine spoke about it, and I was like, I never thought we would see him in this position ever. He's the, he's like the gatekeeper to the game, to the point where BET Awards weekend, the past two, they just didn't feel right because there was no motion, no parties, there was nowhere to go. He was He's clarified that he didn't mean the freak-offs, and he was like, there's just no parties. You feel it like it's a whole. He was everything in hip-hop. For that to die out, you just would have never thought it's sad and it's messed up that we got to witness this. I don't blame him for what he said. <laughs> I do. I don't... I get what he's... Y'all don't bad get what time. he's so saying. So many victims that bad weren't victimized. It's, oh, it's definitely a bad, bad time, time and he shouldn't have said it, but I understood where he was coming from. Like, bad time. Find another promoter. 
Yeah, Calling Diddy a promoter shit. is funny I, as It's fuck. never that serious. That's how Puff started. I know, but that's that's funny. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. He shouldn't he should Someone else up. can throw BET weekend parties in Atlanta. Call Sean, man. Word. You know, that's a little powder puff. <laughs> oh he gonna fight you. <laughs> nah, Sean gotta sh- shoot him. That was wild. Uh, Sean, my nigga. That's my nigga right there. You know I fuck with him. Powder puff is really, really, yeah, it really could be, funny. It could be powder puff. <laughs> it could be like the rebrand. That's, no, it's very funny. Actually. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Sean. Yo, Sadiq still going on? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, definitely. They moved it to, they got a Las Vegas one now. Everything. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if that was officially announced, but Fire. Yeah, that's going to be a, See, a thing. Sean. Different Sean's. Still in the same. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I see how the, the moon and the stars lined up. Come on, man. <laughs> Poor Sean, Sean, go ahead and take that, take that lane. Lead the, you know, the other shit alone. Yeah, no, just have like just, parties. Just yeah, just regular, you know, good night, go home, everybody go home, like that type of party. There's I've been to a million parties that nothing nasty happened. It was yeah. just a good time. And then everyone went home. Yeah. Those are okay. Next voicemail. <laughs> yeah. Cheat on your husband. To conclude the other one. Cheat on your man, my that's how you get at his ad. All right, this thing sucks. Hold on, I'll refresh it. So you get the herpes. <laughs> okay, what's up, y'all? I'm not really asking for advice. I'm more just sharing a funny story, but I also could use advice. So, you know, let me know what y'all think. So when I'm not living on Whore Island waiting for the nuclear bomb, I'm a teacher. As y'all know, it's Maddie. What's up? Um, hey, Maddie. And one of the ways that I keep kids from being absolutely annoying or just wiling out in the classroom is by being incredibly cringe in my classroom management. So when Push and Pee came out and my ninth graders wouldn't shut up about Pushing P, I read the lyrics to them in the style of masterpiece theater. I'm also, you know, catastrophically Caucasian. So they hated this. They stopped saying Push and Pee in my class. So this is like my general like method say the slang back to them, make it immediately not cool. It stops being said in my classroom. The problem is that the students have really become attached to the phrase glazing. And I just cannot use that term back at them, you know, because I'm trying to put genitalia and me or them in the same sentence, right? But like, they, they love saying it like, oh, Mr. Glazing, you're glazing. And it got really bad because they said I was glazing the assistant principal. And I was like, okay, <laughs> we need to stop. <laughs> but if you tell a student to stop, they're just going to keep doing it. So I'm, you know, just laugh at my pain, I guess. And if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Thanks. Stop glazing. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're too much of a glazer. Yeah. I mean, is Julian, you've worked as a teacher. Can she just get the glazing shit off? Uh, or will she be thrown out? Yeah, I was going to say, that's a, that's a weird one because I really did try to think about how I would handle that. In, in her defense, there were some things that my students would say, and I'm trying to remember. I can't remember what the things, that, but I would intentionally use them out of context or like fuck it up and make it sound lame so they would stop saying it. Um, that is a classic strategy. The stuff The glazing Chicago, one, though, you can't work. Tell me how you made, yo, that's on GD sound lame. Luckily, they weren't saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, it was just like, yeah, like typical, you know, rap lyrics or, or insults. And I would just purposely use them out of context or just like refer to myself as it. And I'd be like, now what? And they're like, well, that's not fun if you just call yourself that. So they would just stop. Glazing's tough because in her, to your point, it is inherently sexual. And that's weird to say. Like I taught middle schoolers. I wouldn't be like, stop glazing another 10 year old or 11 year old. It's clear you've been glazing those books. You need to glaze that homework. No. See? Mm-hmm. But it sounds lame. I wasn't trying yeah. to sound cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, my point came across yeah, there, right? Yeah. The angle is to make it sound like yeah. it's fucking lame. So. I think, I think, I don't know. I don't know the school rules or how you, I would say still use it, like use it to the point where it's annoying and nauseating to them. And if the school board just comes to you, say it's something like you're putting extra sauce on something. Like just lie. Like, oh, you're putting extra sauce on like, like a donut, like a glazed donut. You're putting extra sauce on I was about to say, maybe bring it. in some glazed donuts. Mm. Or and then that day you get away with all the glaze comments. Another thing too is like, this is their, you know, this the, the slang, the kid slang. So it's like, all right. So if you don't draw attention to it, or if you don't make it a big deal, I'm not going to say it'll go away, but just don't make it a thing when you hear it. Don't try to call it out because they'll then they'll start saying it intentionally to get a reaction or a rise out of you. So if a kid like raises their hand and gets like a question right and they're like yes and then someone from across the room is like stop glazing or whatever the fuck then just ignore it just pretend like you didn't hear it let it move on 
And then if you don't give it attention, they're more than less likely to say it or do it. And these kids come up with this fucking generation of kids comes up with so much slang so often. Like the new, there'll be a new word on TikTok by tomorrow. Like just wait it out. Um, I know we brought it up on the show already, but it could be a fun time to revisit it. Type in teacher N-word. You could go all the way with it if you want to. Because mm. that was a great strategy for teachers trying to get students to stop saying curse words. Can I get a pencil? Oh, I y'all played that on here before. I know. I mean, like over a year ago. This could be the best strategy. Because then you'll get on the news, too. That's how you really shake the room. That's how you get the timeline in a frenzy. N-word. Get away from the door, nigga. <laughs> And I was he said just, this was his training, too. I repeated, why, why is this word used so frequently? So I just, I just don't understand it. And, and I'm trying to understand it. I need help. Yes, I... <laughs> to I a black need, journalist. You know, I, I, I've, I've used it. I admit it. I put the H on it to emphasize it's... Nigga. Nigga. <laughs> mm -hmm. That, you know, nigga, nigga this, nigga, nigga, please, nigga, you know, can you lend a nigga a pencil? <laughs> so I think what she should do is maybe bring in two pieces of paper with glaze mm. and what the real definition of it is mm. and then glaze and what their definition of, mm -hmm. and then maybe form a line of who's glazed and who hasn't. Or you the could say, um, you'll be glazing summer school this year. Oh, yeah. You start saying like, yo, wait till the summertime and you still in this class. You're going to be glazing me. Whoa, wait. Oh, wait. No, Whoa, no, no, fired, no, fired. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's the end of your tenure. Yeah, no, nah, now, now we fired. As long nah, as she's wearing the appropriate clothes, teachers can say whatever yeah, she, they want. As long as she's wearing loose fitting clothes, <laughs> she can get that off. Yeah, got it. Maddie be in tight ass jeans, ass poking. Probably. Yeah. You know that? Oh. Yeah, she posted when we had that whole argument. She said Rory was an idiot. Uh, do we have another voicemail or should we wrap up? No, let's, let's wrap. Let's wrap up. All right. Yeah. This was fun. Um, <laughs> we are in Toronto this Thursday. Yes. Can't we wait are. to see you guys in the six. Dude. Can't wait. In 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 T dot. Yes. All the cool names that you guys have. Tickets available now at newroryinmall.com. We will be in Atlanta November 22nd and mm -hmm. then finish out the year here home in New York City at the Gramsci Theater, December 13th, 14th. Yes. Uh get your tickets now. Tickets available now at New Rory in Mall. Dot com. Thank you to Wayno for calling in. We appreciate that. Um, all right, man. So let's go get these lighters and gaslight some shit for the rest of the day, man. Agreed. Everybody have a safe week. We'll be back in a couple of days to kick it with y'all. Be safe. Be blessed. I'm that nigga. He's just ginger. Peace.